<laughs> All right, let's let's say, let's get started. So, Gabby J is our first fight. Um, he is the we'll say he's actually the second easiest uh, boxer to task to match the task time for. And um, really, the only thing that's going to stop you from getting the best time on Gabby J is just making certain you punch him on the first frame uh, possible. And really, what you're waiting for when you um, when you're going to throw your first punch is you're going to throw it pretty much right after the announcer screams fight. So as he steps up to the ring here, fight, and then you see something like this. You see, Gabby's guard was up at this time. And the reason for that is because I attempted to punch him too early. And throughout Super Punch Out, you're going you're gonna to have to know when you need to manipulate the guard of a boxer, depending on what you need to do uh, to start the fight. So, you know, it's um, it's not really terribly different from the other punch outs. Basically, you're either going to be holding the up button in order to hold your guard high, or you're going to be holding nothing and allowing your guard to settle in neutral. And what you're doing is, of course, trying to get the boxer to match your guard, and they will match it on the first frame. As soon as that timer up there hits 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, they'll go ahead and match your guard. And at that point, you can start punching. So you need to practice. The very first thing to practice when you want to start getting faster and faster times with this game is hitting as soon as you possibly can when the fight starts. Seems simple, you know, but really whatever your setup is, whether you're using a CRT or whether you're using something like a low latency monitor with a retro tank like I am, um, you're, uh, you need, just need to know the timing of, uh, of what you're playing on. I'm pretty certain that I have maybe a frame or two uh, of difference if, um, you know, if I were to compare it to uh, playing this on a CRT versus playing this on my setup. I don't notice it much anymore. I'm able to sort of internalize it. It may not even be that much. It may just be a frame or even be negligent. But, um, but you just have to practice over and over with your own setup. A lot of people will tell you in the Discord that... Um, you should not be running this on the Switch. You should not be running this on, say, the Wii U. Um, they have tons of latency. You're, if you ever move to original hardware, you will spend a long time trying to just regain your timings. Yes, that's true. I'm also of the opinion if you want to run something on on a on a piece of hardware that you have, you run it. <laughs> you know, I ran it on. Wii, I ran this game on Wii U for a long while. Mystery Man, I believe, has his world record playing it on a Wii U. It's just you play what you have, but you understand, you know, uh, what, uh, you know, what that means, basically. So uh, this is what you're looking for when it comes to the Gabby J fight. Um, if we back up a little bit, what I uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up throwing out a number of left jabs to start the fight. And then what I did was I executed a certain um, dodge buffer in order to get this uh this counter as fast as I could. Um, if you're not familiar with Super Punch-Out terminology, what that means is a counter is basically when you hit a boxer with the same glove, you see the same side, you'll notice Gabby's throwing with his left, with his left glove. Well, actually, okay, it's opposite glove, but it's same side. So he's throwing with his left glove. I'm countering with my right glove. It's on the same side because his left hand is on my right. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, so whenever you manage to hit them while they're attacking you, you're going to get a, a certain type of animation and usually a sound that um, that will tell you, hey, you countered this person. That means they're going to be in hit stun longer, and it means you're usually going to be able to do more damage to them than, say, if you just hit them after dodging a punch. So let's go ahead and back up and do this again. The Gabby J fight is very simple. What we're going to execute is, and you'll see it right here, and we'll, we'll go over it in a moment. So we're gonna start the fight as quickly as we can. Two, three, four, five, and then, oop, I actually was perfect on that. <laughs> so this is why it's important to know what your latency really is for uh, for how you're playing, because um, once, you, once you end up doing this a lot, you'll obviously have a, a, a strong understanding of, of timings. Uh, there's, there's two different strategies here that I've used in the past. If you watch Zallard's videos from before, you'll know that when he does his um 
when he does his uh, his face punches and then he goes to do a maneuver to uh, to uh, to he'll duck down and then he'll punch uh, Gabby J in the face with his glove. And when I have done this before, I have done dodge to the left. The difference between those is one frame. The dodge to the left that gets canceled into a punch is one frame faster than the duck. And what ends up happening is I ended up using that because I had such a bad, um, I, had, I, had, I was basically had this awful frame disadvantage with my previous setup that um, I, uh, I was using the dodge because I knew I was off. I knew already I was off by at least a frame or two. I wasn't punching at exactly the right time. And that's because I knew that I was like, well, it doesn't even matter. I can try and hit the button when I physically, when I see it happening in front of me, but I know I'm already a couple frames off. So when I was playing through this for the first, you know, few months, I decided I wanted to, die, uh, to dodge to the side instead because I would regain one of those frames. If you're perfectly on, if you know you hit Gabby exactly at the right time, you need to duck. Because if you dodge to the side, you actually hit him too fast. And you don't get the counter. So, here I'm pretty sure I can dodge. Yes. So, um, so I knew I was about at least a frame or two off right there when I was started punching him. I did the first four left jabs. And then I did a right jab as the fifth. And then I did either the, I would do either the duck or the dodge. And when you do those movements, you need to cancel them. They're all buffered together. So, uh, you know, buffering a move basically just means when you're doing a certain move, you need to be pressing the buttons to, you need to be pressing buttons for your next move to happen immediately. So if I'm throwing a left jab and I'm watching that left jab connect and I'm hearing that left jab connect, I need to let go of the buttons and then press another left jab. And basically Mac will throw his second left jab as fast as he possibly can. There's no, there won't be any loss of, uh, of frames there. And that's what we call buffering, just linking moves together to make certain that you're doing it as fast as possible. Now, when we're doing the dodge or the duck here for this, uh, for this buffer, we're executing the move but as soon as we do so we're not allowing any time to elapse we're just going to press we're just going to make sure that we hit the uh the right jab as fast as we can and what that'll do is instead of having we'll call him Mac uh instead of having him move to the side or down below and stay there for a moment to allow the animation to finish he'll basically go all the way to the left or right or down and then he'll come back up immediately they'll spend no t no extra time down there and uh, that timing is perfect for being able to slam Gabby J in the face right here. Uh, if you manage to get this part, congratulations, this is half of the battle here. And what you're going to end up doing right here um, will basically allow you to get your dizzy. Now, I'm not just pausing here to show you what's going on. Pausing at this moment is actually the strategy. And the reason for that is because... When you're playing Super Punch Out, what you look if you look down below, you see the super meter that's full of arrows, and that once you get all the way to the left side, you have your S that's flashing, and that means you can activate your uppercuts, and we'll call them high supers and low supers, high rapids and low rapids, basically very strong series of punches or very strong singular punches that do lots and lots of damage. Um, they also fill stun meters very effectively. So uh, what we need right here is this punch right here where Gabby's getting hit he's getting countered this is enough to fill our super meter but our super meter doesn't actually fill fast enough in order for us to link a super after this hit we have to pause because the game will actually refill all the way to the top it'll fill that super meter all the way to the top even while we're paused so and because we usually run with an in-game timer in this game it doesn't matter if we pause we just need to make certain that we have super meter here because we're going to go ahead and buffer our low super right here. And that's going to make sure that Gabby gets dizzy. That was just me having fun hitting him in the face. Um, so that's, that's the first thing you need to know about this. There are a couple of different scenarios in this game where you do need to hit that start button in order to make certain that the super meter catches up. Five, 
and then we do that again. So here we go. I'm pretty sure this is close to the task, if not maybe one frame off. So again, we've hit him in the face with the right jab. We've countered him. We know we've countered him because his eye is off to the side there. So we see the, we know, we know what happens because we hear the, Ugh, but we also know it because we can see it. Um, and now we're going to low super. And then after that, we're going to go into what we're going to call the dizzy buffer. The dizzy buffer is basically just what you need to do to waste the very specific amount of time in order to knock the boxer down as fast as possible. There are only maybe one or two exceptions. I'm, I'm going to generalize here a little bit because I'm working off of memory, but there are only, I think, one or two exceptions to the rule that you should not be wasting more than, if you look up at the clock up there, uh, 0.04. That would be... Is that a couple frames? I think that's a couple frames um, in the time clock. And basically, that is the shortest amount of time that you should, that you can spend. Uh, that's the shortest amount of time that's going to get spent anyway, even if you're as fast as you possibly can. So you'll watch that the uh, um, the counter up there, a... Uh, the counter up there can shift. In, in the case of Gabby's fight here, I believe it's just going to stay static. You're going to see the number, and that's going to be the number. So we're going to... Let's go ahead and do this real quick. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'm blanking right now. Give me a second. Um, this is a knockout, by the way. It's, a, it's one frame off of the task. Uh, I may have misspoke there. Basically, what I what I actually meant to say was, basically, let's just go with this because I'm I'm I think working I think trying to explain the exact numbers right now is gonna mess me up. It's been a little while since I've since I've uh, since I've played this at a at a at a high level. What you're what you're gonna end up um what you're gonna end up doing is the buffer strategy is going to waste the least amount of time, which is hopefully as you know next to probably zero frames. Um, when it comes to the boxer coming back to center here, you'll notice that uh, Gabby did his little dizzy dance. He walked off to the side and then he started coming back and you end up hitting him at the, at the fastest possible time. So when I talk about a dizzy buffer, all I'm talking about is these are the moves you link together in order to waste that very specific amount of time. Now there are two types of buffers for this situation. There's one, that I tried to learn <laughs> initially when I first started running this game, and I almost didn't start speed running it because I had such an issue with it. And it's the one that Zallard came up with, I believe. And um, so here we are. Uh, Gabby's going to go ahead and get dizzy. And this this is actually a I like this buffer now, but it's only really because I understand it much better, and only also because I believe it's used in in other. It's it's either used in part of the vision run or I've used I've used it in a blindfold run as well. So I started to get more accustomed to it. Basically, the buffer ends up being is you want a full duck, and I'm gonna be really specific about this. The movements that you do with Mac, um, basically you have to we we differentiate them between whether or not you're holding the button down, whether or not you tapped the button, or whether or not you just uh sorry, when you tap the button, we call it a tap, dodge, or duck, or at least that's the terminology I use. Um, when I talk about a full duck or a full dodge, I mean, I'm holding the button down and making certain that that animation is as long as it can possibly be. Um, eventually, Mac will come back to center anyway. He doesn't stay there any any longer in the sense, like if you hold the button down, it's not like Mac's going to stick to the side for a really, really long time. He's simply going to go for as long as the game allows him to, and then he's going to come back to neutral. Uh, and then there's the, uh, usually the canceled duck or dodge, which is like I explained before, you do a move right after you do the input and it happens lightning fast and you're done with it. So in this case, we want a full duck. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to hold that duck button. And you see me ducking all the way down. And, uh, I'm on baby watch, so, uh, 
I'm going to wait a couple of minutes. If she starts screaming, I might need to uh, bail for a moment. But uh, so you see Mac ducking down. Again, we were holding the down button. And what we're going to end up doing is as we see Mac coming back up, we're going to hold the B button. The B button is our right body blow. And uh, what that's going to do is that we've managed to utilize the time, all of the time it would be for Mac to do the full duck. And then as he's finishing the full duck, we're going to make certain he does that right body blow. And then we're going to link it into a high super just like that. Now, the tricky part with that is, is if you just try to do that off of site um, and not, and you're, you aren't explained that, hey, you need to be holding the down button, you're gonna screw it up every time because you'll just see it and you go like, oh, I duck and then I punch and then I swing. No, it's, it's just not gonna be enough time. It won't end up working out. So that's, uh, so you need to be able to hold the button down as for hold the button down, make certain he does the longest duck possible, and then as he's coming up, link into right body blow, so the low body blow, and then uppercut him, and then Gabby will hit the mat. There is a different buffer that I'm going to show you right now, and it's the one that I came up with because it it made more sense to me at the time. I don't really use it too much anymore, but sometimes I do when I'm just I don't know when I'm when I'm feeling it. Uh, it's the exact same thing. It wastes exactly the same number of frames. It is a canceled left dodge into two left jabs. Same thing. So watch. Two left jabs. Same thing. See, 626. Six, that's the fastest time you can get on Gabby J. It's exactly the same as the other one. And really, it just kind of boils down to preference. That's kind of the lovely thing about this. If you end up finding a buffer that feels more comfortable for you... Hey, if it doesn't waste any more time, perfect. <laughs> you can just use it. Or if you're not even that concerned about getting the very best times possible, then don't even worry about it. Just use the buffer you like. Because as long as you get them down from the dizzy, that's really what it's all about. So, one more time with Gabby J. Again, we're going to do four left jabs, a right jab, and then we're going to do one of the motions. That was kind of quick, so we're going to do the duck. So I probably lost a bit of time here because I should have done a dodge, but that's okay. So again, I did the duck, I hit him, I paused to make sure that the super meter caught up. I know that I countered him. As I unpause, I'm going to link into a low super, and then I'm going to do the buffer of choice, which is this one, I guess. And Gabby hits the mat. And he'll never get up from that. You've killed him. Good job. <laughs> you get experience. And that's Gabby J. Be simple. You could boot up your, you could boot up your um, extremely legal copy of Super Punch Out or your very extremely legal copy of Super Punch Out, and try this. And I'm certain that you can get at least close to that time. Like 6.5x for Gabby is free, absolutely free. In fact, as long as you can get the dizzy on him. Here, I'll show you another one. It's even simpler, an even simpler buffer for Gabby. It doesn't get simpler than this. I'm pretty sure this is the one. I'm gonna look like a fool if uh, this isn't, but. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna counter him again. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do left, right. Check it out. He's down. Easy peasy. Left body blow, right body blow, uppercut. You don't even have to mess with the movements. Some of them just have that. That's enough about Gabby though. Let's move on to Bear Hugger. So there are two very specific strategies for fighting Bear Hugger as fast as possible. I'm only going to show you the first one because the second one is quite difficult. Maybe I'll try it at the very end, but it's really, really hard to do, specifically because the buffer you have to do is to make certain you get a frame-perfect punch on Bear Hugger's face. And as you'll see, when it comes to countering Bear's strides, you'll know what that means in a moment, um... It's a, the window is much, much tighter than the, the simpler method that I'm going to show you. And the simpler method can save upwards of, we're talking like a little more than half a second. So it's not huge, but once you get up there, you're going to want every little bit of time. So I'm going to show you the simpler process that can yield um, a consistent time with Bear uh, every time. So... Bear is one of two fights where you're not going to manipulate his guard at the start. 
You're just not going to do it. What you're going to do is you're going to buffer a left jab. And the buffering the left jab, of course, is going to make him block, and then he's going to attempt to hit you with that overhead attack that he has. Um, and uh, we, we want to start this as quickly as we can because we want to get Bear into doing his strides. And... Um, I believe it's a boxing term uh, to do strides. It's, it's fancy footwork, basically. It's it's shifting your feet around. It's changing your position as you're fighting someone. And Bear does a, Bear does this one animation where he'll kind of shift his legs inward and then back outward. And I'll show you what that means right after we get through this first part. This first part is a cakewalk. You're gonna punch him in this. Uh, you're gonna punch him high. Again, you're not manipulating his guard at all. You're just gonna punch high. You're gonna duck this. And you're gonna punch him five times in the face. That's it. That's the first part of it. So five left jabs to the face. Now, here's where we're going to start watching Bear very carefully. Normally, Bear Hugger will stick his tongue out at you and take zero damage if you try to hit him in the belly. Um, there is a specific animation that Bear can do where he kind of grins at you and he starts pointing at his stomach. And you hear kind of like a wunk, 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 little sound that he does. I'll show you right here. See right there, he's pointing at himself. He's kind of taunting you. The thing is, when he does that, you can hit him in the stomach. Instead, if you do it at any other time, you get this. So what you're doing is you're waiting for him to do that, and you can hit him in the tummy. You see that you get super meter from it, and you can do follow-up attacks. This is how we get Bear to the point where we can dizzy him. We need to hit him as quickly as we can, um during that animation we want to hit him at the absolute like first frame of that animation and what we're looking for here is you see his feet they've managed to go inward you're going to see them cross back outward you see how they came back out what you're looking for is you want those feet to go in and then as they're coming back out just as they finish hitting the sides there as you see him like do his little watch him like kind of bouncing up and down in out in out in out in out in out in out you know in out you're gonna want to hit him at those specific times and he's only you're gonna be able to hit him when when it's only the one stride you're not looking to wait for the two and i'll, I'll show you right here so let's just go through the uh the fight itself two three four five we're gonna do this we hit him in there and we hit him twice in the face we hit him again we hit him in the face we hit him with a super we do it one more time oop i messed it up and that's an easy thing to do, even when you're doing the easier strat for Bear Hugger. And uh, there's a reason for that. Um, the timing to hit him on those strides ends up being different after you've hit him with a super punch. So you notice this. I'm just going to hit him while he's striding. The timing on this is really quite similar. And you'll notice it's because I'm hitting him with the same attack over and over. It has the exact same hit stun. It has the exact same timing for him to go back into his, his motion. And then basically this never changes. You could just keep doing this forever. Notice he's taking no damage though. I do get super meter off of it, but you know, basically all I'm doing is just kind of messing around with him. Ow. Um, During those times when you're hitting him during the strides, you have to start hitting him with super punches. And when you do so, that timing shifts just a little bit. It shifts enough to where um, it uh, it starts messing with you. By the way, this is the harder strategy that I'm doing right here. Um, this may not work. Nope, I messed it up anyway. I'll show it again one more time at the end. But essentially what you're looking for is you have to hit three of those strides. And the third one is going to be ever so slightly off. Very slightly so you can't really trust... I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to punch him in the face. Um, you can't really trust your timing to start. The first two are going to be very similar. Then the last stride is going to be ever so slightly off. It's going to be a little bit more, you know, uh, a little more after it. So it's one. See, I finish with a jab. I do it again. But this time I'm hitting him with a super. And the super is going to make him you know, fly backward, you know, the dramatic ouch, and there's more hit stun attached to that. So now I have to be very careful about making certain I hit him there. That was incorrect, by the way. You know, that was not the actual punch you need to do. I added an extra jab there. So let's go through the motions. We want to get him to dizzy now. So we're going to start with our 
hide our left jab. We're going to hit him five times. Then we're going to do one stride, two face jabs. Second stride, a face jab and a super. Third, I keep messing it up. <laughs> this is a tricky fight. You will spend a while um, learning how to uh, how to get his strides every time. It's important to sort of get that initial timing down and uh, then work you know work your way from there. But um, yeah, see, I'm having a, I'm having a little bit of trouble with it. I need to wait just ever so slightly longer. Basically, the moment that he starts the animation, even if you don't see him start the animation to point at his belly, he's vulnerable. So you won't even see him really get to that point most of the time, or you might see it like very slightly. Okay, so now we're finishing the third stride. It's just a super, and then we're going to go ahead and go into the uh, the knockdown. This is going to be a 1354. Um, uh, so what this is is that... Uh, we're going we're hitting bear hugger here what what we ended up doing was after we did the last super the third stride and then it's just the single super you don't throw any extra jabs that's when bear's going to get dizzy if you got the if you were tight enough on the strides you could have done this slow it could have been slow enough to the point where his dizzy meter would not have filled up and that's that that kind of sucks but you have to practice it you have to make certain that you're hitting the window very carefully and that means is you have to be you know tight within that time where you see him doing the stride and then getting you know having the opportunity to hit him in the stomach really fast if you take too long between those this isn't going to fill his stun meter up enough to get him to the dizzy point and the harder strat that i was mentioning is it's a much shorter window like you need to be on the ball you have to be hitting him as he's as he's completing that stride or else He's just not going to get dizzy. He'll end up going into his angry phase. He'll go all the way to the back of the ring and start charging you, which you'll see in phase two here. But um, so that's the important thing about this fight. You have to be very precise on hitting that timing for the strides. And the rest of it, once you get to this point, is all buffered stuff. There's nothing else to it. Like the rest of this fight is, a, is just easy peasy. You just need to know what to throw. So... Hi, little dog. Hey, folks, if anyone else has come in, uh, doing a little primer on Super Punch Out. So, again, face punch, dot. We're going to duck down below, throw five left jabs. We're going to hit him real fast and do two left jabs. Do it again, only one left jab in the super, a third time in just the super. And then what we're going to do here for the buffer. And you should be doing the buffer anyway. Even if you're, even if you're, you go like, oh man, I'm not sure if this is going to dizzy. You still have to input this because sometimes you may just think that you're off and you can salvage it anyway. Uh, the buffer here is, I've, I've actually seen two ways. I'm going to show you the one that I've, that I've been using for a long time, along with uh, uh, Zallard. I think Mystery Man uses a, a different one. And uh, while this is, is you're going to duck you're going to cancel that duck with two left body blows, and then you're going to throw the uppercut. Two left body blows, throw the uppercut. And this is what I kind of meant about the, the, the 0 .04, by the way. If you looked up at the top, we were at 1347 before a bear hugger got knocked down. Um, we've wasted those two frames. Um, and I, and of course, you know, I telling you it's 0.04 it, it, that, you know, math would, you know, have that dictate that would be 1351, but I'm pretty sure there's no 1351. There's no 0.51 in the, uh, in this game. Uh, it just, it's, it, it, it's, it's 50 or it's 52. You don't get, you're never going to get a 51. It, it, there are some numbers that you're just not going to hit kind of like in Mike Tyson's punch out. There are only certain, uh, there are only certain, uh, numbers for the, for the frames basically. So, uh, but that's what I meant by yeah, knocking Bear down, knocking other boxers down as fast as possible. You'll see just about that amount of time go by. And that's how you know, oh, I got him on the very first frame. So, One, two, three, just as a little bit of history, for Phase 2, we used to do a buffer where we had a possibility of knocking Bear down really fast. Like, just uppercutting him and he was done. Uh, the problem with it was, is if he, like 80% of the time he would dodge out of the way and he'd end up wasting almost three quarters of a second, if not a full second, um, doing his dodge animation and then getting to the point where you could hit him again. 
that's that's no good. We wanted to be a little more consistent. So uh, this strategy um, was developed, and basically it's a buffer that ends with rapid punches, and the rapids are supposed to hit Bear um, during a frame where he can't dodge because he's starting up an attack, and it hits him as quickly as you can make it. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is you're going to buffer two right jabs into two left body blows. One, two, one, two, and then high rapids right after that. You'll notice how you saw Bear, he was getting ready to start throwing a punch. He's pretty much stuck in that animation when he does that. So it's two right jabs, two left body blows, and then you're linking the high rapids, which is holding up and tapping A twice, um, or just tapping A rapidly. And uh, that should always work. And you're usually going to get about the time that we have here, 14.2x. Uh, if you're really fast, you probably end up getting a 14.1x. When we're when we were going for super super fast times, um, including that like 20% uppercut I was talking about, you could get below 13 seconds. But good luck getting out of minor circuit. Just have fun fighting bear constantly. <laughs> I'm gonna try and show you the harder method real quick, just for funsies. It starts with strides, and this is a nope, I messed it up already. It starts with, you have to hit him during a stride, then you punch him in the face, and then you do a buffer that makes your right jab frame perfect. And it's that's important because hitting a boxer with a frame perfect punch gives you more super arrows than if you didn't hit them with a frame perfect punch. So you have to do that in order to be able to get your super meter high enough to where you can start executing super punches faster which will allow you to get the dizzy meter full see i'm already having trouble with it because what this buffer ends up being is it's a double duck buffer where you have to duck like normally then you have to duck again and cancel that and it ends up being kind of a tricky thing for your thumb and i got it that time but i'm not sure i got the window on this tight enough like you're noticing i'm, I'm throwing these punches as fast as i can here i don't know if this is good enough Oh, and it is. Somehow is. So look at that time up there. Now we're 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 below 13 seconds right now, which is great. Um, I'm gonna show you the buffer that we used for the for the uppercut, which is high jab, body blow jab. You'll notice he dodged it. And check it out. We ended up getting 1426, even though we tried the harder strat. That's how much time it wastes. If we ended up getting that uppercut, it would have been still under 13 seconds. It would have been a 1299. That's how much time you end up losing with it. What's that like? A uh, second and a quarter? It's huge. Particularly when you're trying to do a, uh, any strats that have frame perfect punches in them. So, um, and uh, I made those strides look pretty simple, but those are tight. They're really tight. You spend a while learning how to do those. So there's your there's your little taste of an advanced strat for bear hugger yes you can learn it yes it is faster yes it's really nice when you can put it together into a run especially if you wanted to try for a strong top top 10 top five time that you won't even need it for top 10 honestly but for top five yeah you probably want it for a really good one uh and that's basically it for bear hugger let's move on to piston hurricane he's a favorite he's the easiest one to task <laughs> like the easiest one <laughs> and he's one of the simplest boxers like just super super simple in fact he's so simple that i've already showed you showed you it here i'll show you the second phase first just to just to whet your appetite hold a that's it you just hold a that's literally it when you see that you just hold a he'll never hit you you'll always hit him he'll always hit the mat he'll always go down that's your second phase <laughs> Let's back up to the first phase. The first phase is actually pretty simple. Um, this is your first enemy where you're going to manipulate his guard up at the start of the fight. So, um, when we fought Gabby, we didn't press anything. We just let the ref yell fight, and then then we pressed up and Y in order to jab him after you know when his when his guard lowers. For this, we want to be holding the up button to make certain that when fight gets yelled that Piston Hurricane is going to raise his guard because we want to punch him in the stomach. And that's what we're going to do. And all of these punches are linked together. 
You don't need to stop here. Like, here, I'll, I'll even hold up for a little while longer. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, and then I do a buffer, and then he's down. Like, this is all completely linked together. So as long as you can just manipulate his guard, <laughs> just hit him as fast as you possibly can and do the right sequence, and he's down. <laughs> I wonder why his mouth guard is on the mat. <laughs> so again, hold up. Get his guard up, punch him in the stomach three times with a left body blow, three left jabs, another left body blow, and then do a buffer. This is a 552. It's a great time. <laughs> you know, it. you feel bad when you do Piston Hurricane in a run and you end up getting like a 558 or God forbid a 5.6 after you learn the fight because like it's it's so consistent. You'll eventually get to the point where you can snooze while you fight him. Salad and I actually talked about like doing our own commentary for Minor Circuit because it was so there was it was so simple after a certain point. Um, but in any case, we're gonna I'm gonna show you the um, the buffer real quick. And uh, so again, manipulate guard high, three left body blows, three left jabs, a last left body blow. So that's the so that's your fourth one. After this one connects, you will get dizzy. And all you're gonna do here is you you can do a different you can do it a number of ways. Zaller does it a different way than I do. Um, I prefer doing dodges. I do I do cancel dodges a lot when I can into when I'm doing buffers. Zaller tends to usually do cancel ducks. It doesn't really matter here. Um, normally, when you when you when you do a a duck versus a dodge, there's a, there's going to be a frame difference. The duck's going to be one frame longer. But in this case, the way it ends up getting canceled out, they're both the same speed. So um, what I like to do is I do a left dodge and then I cancel it into a left jab and then I do a low super just like this. And that's it. Never, ever have to worry about Piston Hurricane again. If he ever gets to throw a punch, he did something wrong. Whole day. That's all you got to remember. Just whole day. That's it. That's Piston Hurricane. He's the easiest boxer in this game. Ball Bull. So Bob Bull's really your first challenge in some ways when you play this uh, blind. Uh, mainly because he attacks a lot. He packs a punch and uh, Bull Charge can be pretty scary when you uh, when you don't know how to counter it. So Bob Bull's our first fight. Let's see. Not our first fight. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and stop saying that. <laughs> Um, Ball Bull will require us to manipulate his guard up at the fight. So just like we did with Piston Hurricane, we're going to end up starting with right body blows on him. And these are specific because they're damage specific. So what we're going to do is we're going to link two right body blows together. So manipulate his guard high, hit him with one, two. What he's going to end up doing at this point is he's going to go into a stance where he's going to want to hit you. You want to counter him, and you can't link this third one together with the other two because you're going to hit him too fast. Watch, I'm going to link this one together. Oops, that wasn't a counter. I needed that to be a counter because if it's not a counter, I can't continue up with that. He's going to come out of hit stun too fast, and then he's basically going to lose all the stun meter. You'll never get him dizzy. So manipulate guard high. One, two. As this one connects, I'm going to watch for him. I'm going to wait ever so slightly. The timing on this is you're just going to have to learn it. Um, what you really just need to do is make certain that you counter his punch. Just like that, you're going to hear him go, oof, as he finishes up. Um, and uh, when he does that, I'm going to follow this up with a left jab into a right body blow. These are all linked together. Okay, so we did two right body blows. Then we did the third, um, which is the counter. We followed that with a left jab into a right body blow. This is going to finish his hit stun, so he's going to go back to trying to punch me again. And he's going to do so with, um, with his right glove, so I need to hit him with a left jab. The left jab will counter him. This, again, cannot be linked. It's not going to hit him. It's not going to counter him if I, uh, if I link this together. If I try to buffer it together. So I'm going to wait for just a split second, basically. I'm going to let myself punch him. There we go. 
So there it is. I'm going to hit him one more time in the face with a left jab. I'm going to finish it with a low super. He will be dizzy after this. So when he gets dizzy, this is a very simple buffer um, in order to do the phase one knockdown. Remember, Bull's going to get up twice. So we're always going to have three phases with Bull. But for the first thing here, all you're going to do is left jab, right jab, uppercut. Very easy. Left jab, right jab, uppercut. Simple, simple. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, main route was the lowest 4.9. Oh, are you talking about a Piston Hurricane? Uh, if you're talking about Piston Hurricane, 5.49. If I'm not mistaken, is the task for him. So. <laughs> it could, it could, Lori. <laughs> I use linked a lot. Yeah, I, I have a tendency to say the word buffered into as well a lot. So I've been trying to intersperse it with linked, probably using linked a lot now. So this is the first phase. Um, it is, uh, there's no RNG to it. And I probably should have been explaining before as well. Minor circuit um, does not have any RNG for the most part. There's only one little bit of it. As long as you do this all perfectly, there's only one bit of RNG and it doesn't matter. It won't matter because it's in the bull charge and... I'll show you phase three. It just doesn't matter. So here comes phase two. Bull's going to get it up at a certain point. Don't worry, he will get up. So what we're going to end up doing is, as he comes back, we're going to manipulate his guard high again. So he needs to be holding his gloves up. Now, we're going to do another right body blow here. Remember at the start of the fight, we started with two right body blows. We're going to do one more right body blow as uh, when we manage to manipulate his guard up. Now, I gotta be specific about this. If you do this too fast, there is a possibility <laughs> that um, that bull will dodge your uppercut because you're gonna follow up your body right body blow with an uppercut. That uppercut ends phase two. He will hit the mat after that. But you almost wanna waste, you basically like wanna waste one frame. You know, you're trying to waste the, the, the the least number of frames possible waste one frame if you can and um and then hit him after that if you're frame perfect on this there is a chance he can dodge it there's also a chance he'll take it but it's like a coin flip if i'm not mistaken so you don't want to have to play through the whole minor circuit again just try and waste that frame so you're gonna see me delay like ever so slightly and that's it so and here's where that 0.04 is going to come into play again. You see I've knocked him down. It's 8, eight seconds, 0.52. Uh, we're going to end the fight at 8.56. And the reason for that is because, as you've probably been noticing, a lot of the animations in this game, as the boxer is doing them, especially when they're not near Mac, as in you can't hit them, the timer stops for a lot of them. It just doesn't keep going. You're going to see that with Bull's Bull Charge here. What he'll do is he's going to get back up, his trainer is going to yell at him to do the bull charge, and he's going to either back up all the way to the ring, and you're going to see him kind of crouch down, you know, facing you straight on, or he's going to back up like a half step, and he's going to sort of show his shoulder to me. Um, those are visual cues that shows, of course, hey, he's either doing a full bull charge or he's doing a short bull charge. It determines how many hops he does before he comes in for the knockdown blow, because you'll get knocked down if he hits you. Um, the buffer that we do here covers both of those bull charges. So this is your one RNG moment for bull, and it doesn't even matter. As long as you do this correct this buffer correctly, you won't, uh, you'll either hit him during your left body blow, your first one, or your second left body blow. And you'll hit him, basically, you'll always hit him as fast as you can. So this is going to be an 8.56. The buffer here is you're going to start with a right jab. And as you're doing the right jab, you're going to buffer it into a duck. And then you're going to cancel that duck with two left body blows. So it's right jab into a duck and then canceling that duck with two left body blows. You're going to hit bull on either the first one or the second one. You'll hit him with the first if it's a short bull charge. You'll hit him with the second if it's a long bull charge. Let's see how this plays out.
You see? 8.56. He did the long bull charge. That's it. That's bull. As long as you follow those steps every time, you're not going to need to worry about RNG. All right. Congratulations. It's minor circuit. Let's move on. All right. You want to talk about RNG? All right. Bob Charlie. So Bob Charlie teaches new players that not only can these boxers be very erratic, but they can also just... They can also do, they look like they go into certain animations and then they fake you out. So Bob loves to do what he calls sh uh, shuck and jive. Um, he usually will follow up his attacks with one on the left and one on the right. However, if he feels like it, he'll either dance around the ring sometimes, sometimes completely avoiding your punches, or he'll decide, hey, I want to you know, walk back to the back of the ring, which is on a timer. So if you get to that particular point, that's just, this is bad luck. Um, but he'll walk to the back of the ring and he'll like dance around a little bit. He might like hop at you and not do anything, or he might charge up a windmill punch. There are a lot of things he can do. When it comes to speed running Bob, you can do it the crazy way, <laughs> or you could do it the methodical way. The crazy way is praying that you can hit him seven times. And I say praying because there's probably a higher power uh, associated with it because Bob does not like to let you hit him seven times. Watch him do it right now. You fucking asshole. <laughs> I shouldn't be cursing so much when I, do a, <laughs> when I do a tutorial, but okay. That's the perfect Bob RNG <laughs> for phase one. <laughs> You've never seen anything better than that. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, Let's see if he takes the punch. Fight. Nope. You see, see when I when I was, he was saying shuck and jive, um, he could have opted a, during that attack in that attack animation to instead of a hit me to just kind of like do like a feint and then move into his next move. So it's kind of like the game's way of trying to fake you out. But you want him to do that and feint because if he does. Faint, you know, F-E-I-N-T, not like passing out, um, like doing a, like a, you know, a fake out move. Uh, you want him to do that because he's open to getting punched immediately in the face. And if you do an uppercut, you knock him down. And it's usually like under six seconds, which is an incredible Bob time. You want that every single time. Uh, so if you want to go crazy and pray that you can get seven hits, by all means, go for it. I don't endorse that strategy. I think you're nuts if you want to do it. I think this is the much easier Bob Charlie. Notice, look, I tried to punch him. He wandered away from me. The jerk. He can do this upwards of like three times. He can also randomly block you. Um, if when I tried to punch him seven times there, if he just decided at one point, he's just like, no, nah, I don't want to get hit. I don't want to take this. I'm just going to block this. If he blocks like three punches, uh, you're done. You're done. Your run's dead. Uh, <laughs> unless you don't care if you're going to get like a 30 second Bob. Um, you really, really should be trying to aim for a Bob that's somewhere within like the 10 to 12 second range for, I mean, 12 seconds is pretty, it's really meh, but Sometimes you just roll with it in case you end up getting supremely good RNG on the other fights. Uh, because it can really suck to just be stuck in minor circuit all the time. Just get out of minor circuit for once and then have Bob ruin your run. Um, so let's talk about the actual, um, the, the good strategy for this. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to try to hit Bob in the face again as many times as we can. But instead of trying to throw seven punches... What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up throwing four. We're going to try and jab him in the face four times. So we're going to use left jabs for this because it's the fastest and weakest punch, but the fastest. Three. Okay. So he's going to get hit four times here, which is great. This is our optimal strategy if we're doing the safer method. Um, so when it comes to Bob getting hit four times or if Bob decides to block or otherwise, it doesn't matter here. Basically, within the span of the time frame of four punches, four left jabs, what you're going to want to do is you buffer a left dodge 
and then cancel it into another left jab. And you're going to see right now, because this is actually perfect. This pause is perfect here because you see Bob is going to try and hit me with his left glove. He's trying to swing. He's going to come and swing wide with his left glove. And uh, because I'm going to interrupt him with my left jab here, it's going to hit him. He's going to immediately move to his right glove. So he's just going to do this exact kind of this exact same animation here, only he's going to switch sides. What this is going to happen here is I'm going to dodge to the left. I'm going to cancel it with a left jab and it's going to counter him because that's it's going to be just about the time that he's going to be trying to hit me with the same glove. So I'm going to counter him. And then if I manage to get four punches in on Bob here, as long as I counter him and do two more left jabs, I know this is a lot of punches to keep in mind, but if I counter him and then do two more left jabs, I can then immediately do a rapid uh, I can go into high rapids and I'll stun him really fast. You can keep jabbing him. It will still get him dizzy, but the rapids will say end up saving a number of frames. So let's just go ahead and show you what's going to go on. I've hit him four times. I've managed to stun him. I'm going to hit him two more times and then I'm going to do high rapids. One, two. And then I just did a buffer in order to... Uh, to get that right. I think I might have gotten the I think I might have done it wrong. I can't remember if this can't remember if it ends up being one frame lost or if it's supposed to be exact. I think it's supposed to be exact. I might have gotten that buffer wrong. But um so that's essentially it. If you want to simplify that strategy, hit hit Bob in the face four times with left jabs. Do the dodge into the cancel it with a left jab so that you counter him. Then just keep punching him with left jabs. I think you. I think it'll end up being three. Um, and then he gets dizzy. You'll know when he's about to get dizzy because um, you'll see him do the. You'll see him do the little animation where it's uh, it's like you're finishing a series of punches. You know, you hit the boxer, and then you know it's like the game's like, oh, okay, this is the last punch. Like you only get so many, and then you'll hit him, and then you'll see him kind of going like the the boxer will get hit. And then they'll get out of that stun, and then they'll start fighting again. Only for Bob, he's just going to get dizzy. <laughs> um, depending on what you hit Bob with at the very end here, as he starts his um, uh, his dizzy, the buffer is going to be different. So, and the reason for that is because if you do rapids, the rapids are going to carry over into the buffer. You can't stop them physically. They're going to keep happening until they whiff. So you, um, when we do the high rapids here, we only end up hitting Bob once. It's a single one. It's a single punch to the face. And then what's going to end up happening is Mac is going to end up throwing the second punch in that rapid, but he's going to whiff. And then as he does so, he's basically done. Then then the game's like, oh, OK, I can accept more inputs from you. Um, when you do it with rapids, you have to do a series of jabs. I, be, I, I think it's two left jabs and a right jab into the high super for the knockdown. I I, I might be wrong because I think that time is weird. But there is another more basic um, uh, uh, buffer that you need to know because you're only going to be able to hit him with these, these rapids into Dizzy um, in this particular situation, which is the best luck. Or if you just happen to get lucky sometime and you're wailing on him and then you manage to do some rapids and you accidentally dizzy him so i'll show you the other buffer um in fact i'll show it to you right now there's no point in me uh doing phase two and not showing it to you so so we're gonna try again he's gonna dodge he dodged three of those punches but notice I still got one of them. I got the last in the four series of in the series of four left jabs, and I can still dodge and do and hit him here. That's your constant. He can dodge, he can dodge, he can block, he can do whatever for the first four punches, but he's always gonna come back and try and hit you at that at that particular moment in time. So that's this is this is the reason why it's more consistent. It's because you know for a fact that you're at least going to be able to counter him here and get a series of punches off. And then maybe 
he'll be lenient and not dodge the next punches that you throw at him uh, in order to try to get him dizzy. Uh, how many, how long you're willing to go in order to dizzy Bob really is going to depend on what perhaps your goal is for speedrunning this game. But, uh, you know, the more the longer you end up going in this fight for phase one, the more you're going to have to start learning in order to make certain you get Bob dizzy because you want him dizzy so phase two goes faster. You don't want to have to just fight Bob normally. You will get like a minute long, minute plus Bob, if that's the case, or around that time. So again, we countered Bob. We're just going to keep swinging. We're, we're basically swinging for the fences now. We're hoping he doesn't. There it is. We got lucky. We got lucky. So Bob just decided after getting countered there that he just didn't feel like dodging the rest of those punches or ducking or or uh, or blocking. So he took them to the face. And I got to show you, I showed you the, the, the actual buffer that you use if you get, if you hit him with a normal punch and that starts the dizzy, it's left jab, two right body blows, throw an uppercut. And as you can see, 92 moves to 96. That's as fast as you can get. So, all right. So we got this far <laughs> with Bob. You've already like, ah, oh, crap. This, this guy's got a lot of RNG to him. Well, it's not over yet. So, dependent on what time you got for Bob hitting the mat here, you want to reference, it's basic. I mean, I have a note card that's actually taped up on my desk here that states, hey, if Bob gets knocked down at this time, try this, try this. There are at least four different scenarios that we know of where um, where basically the, the tactic changes a little bit. Like, if I knock Bob down here at, like, a 5.6x, um, I, uh, you know, in my notes, I'm like, okay, I would do a delayed uppercut, which is a high super, uh, meaning I wouldn't do it on the first frame of the, uh, of, you know, of coming back, but I would delay it by a couple frames. And then if he dodges, I would buffer with a right jab to counter him and then do a low super. And that would knock him down. Or... At a 7.1x, I'd wait for a second. I'd wait for like a few frames, I should say. I, I shouldn't use words like seconds. I'd wait for a few frames, and then i just do high rapids because it will catch Bob because I know at 7.1x, that's around the time that Bob will start throwing another punch, and that will knock him down. In this case, we look at the clock, we go 7.96, and I look back up my note card, and I go, I don't have anything for 7.9. The closest thing I have is 7.8x. I'm like, okay, that might still be good enough. Basically, I just have to say, okay, instead of seeing, I see on here that I wrote delayed uppercut or buffer left jab into low super. Maybe instead of throwing the uppercut because I'm already a little bit past that time, I'm just going to wait for Bob to throw his punch and then just buffer that left jab into low super. So I'm going to wait for him and see where he's at. Oop, and I got it wrong too. <laughs> That's bad. Um, but uh, yeah, he waited a while there. I probably should have just tried, tried for the uppercut. So there are multiple scenarios for what you could be doing during phase two that are all dependent on, did Bob take these punches? Look, he took three punches here. Let's see if he keeps going. Oh, okay. So we ended up getting a 6.50. And I do have something that's 6.5x. It's a short delay uppercut or time a left counter. I'm going to try the short delay uppercut. Note, Bob blocked my uppercut. He can do that. However, I know that if he does do the up, if he does block my uppercut, I time a left a left jab counter. And I did so and then I did my low super. Bob's not getting up from this. I'm going to walk away with a 9.58 which is acceptable. It's not incredible, but it's acceptable. I'd take it in a run. I'd take it and hope for better for better luck as I go. So, as a recap for Bob, the methodical fight is attempting to hit him with four left jabs, and then always, 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 no matter whether or not those jabs connected, you're gonna do the dodge, Cancel that into a left jab so that you counter Bob and do a number of left jabs after that. I got three. One, two, three. Okay, another 6.5. So 
Remember that the buffer is going to be different, whether or not you dizzy him with rapids or with a normal punch. And then just kind of look at your notes and then try your best. Because you know what? Sometimes Bob just takes the uppercut and I'll take that 7.20. I'll take that any day of the week. That is not bad. So, this is Bob Charlie. It would be a lot easier for me to just write out the Bob notes. <laughs> I think I wrote them down in the Super Punch Out Discord for someone. Uh, yeah, it's easy, easier just to reference something like that. Dragon Chan. Okay. So, to fight Dragon Chan effectively, um, you'll be working a lot on uh, making certain you get the first phase down correctly. Uh, to start the fight with Dragon Chan, you want to make sure his guard is up. So hold up. You're going to be punching him in the belly a lot. So those are the first four punches. It starts with two left body blows and two right body blows. Now, these are not all linked together. The first two left body blows are linked, are buffered. Um, so I'm holding up to make sure his guard goes up so I can punch him in the tummy. I'm going to hit him twice. The third one you can buffer as well, which so you're buffering left body blow, left body blow, right body blow. That second right body blow cannot be buffered. He will block it. You have to wait a tiny bit of time to make certain that he does not attempt to hit you. Uh, sorry, not, not attempt to hit you. You have to wait a tiny bit amount of time to make certain he will get hit. Sorry, I'm getting a little tired. Um, so those first four punches are very important. They're very important because you need to make certain that Dragon Chan takes a certain amount of damage and keeps his stun meter high here. Um, the reason we're throwing, we're going to be throwing a lot of right body blows here is because not only does the right body blow do more damage than all of the other punches, but it also does a lot of stun. And uh, you're going to see right here, if you manage to do these first four punches correctly, what we're going to end up doing for the fifth one is we're going to stun Dragon Chan. Again, you can't buffer this together for, um, you can't buffer this, these next punches together. You're just going to have to time it. So, so you're waiting for him to step off to the side. He's going to step to the left. He's going to take like a step and a half about, step and a half, maybe two. And then you're going to punch him with a left body blow. And that will stun him. You're going to see his body kind of shudder, as, as a lot of the boxers do when they get countered. Now, now that you've countered him, you only have two more punches to go before, uh, before he gets dizzy. So you're going to buffer the first one after this hit here. So you hit him. You're going to buffer right body blow. And then you're going to duck. So again, you're going to hit him with a right body blow. You're going to duck. And then you're going to cancel that duck with a second right body blow, like so. And he gets dizzy. <laughs> That's the biggest sequence for the Dragon Chan fight. Get that first phase down. Ingrain that to memory. Get the timing down. Because once you do, not only does it feel really good. By the way, okay. So maybe I maybe I misspoke. Let's, let's say that the third and fourth... But, um, punches here the two right body blows don't link them together so these two are fine but the other ones you kind of have to time this is a decent time for knocking uh dragon chan down not great but not bad so let's uh let's review real quick his guard is supposed to be manipulated high you're going to go with two linked left body blows you're going to wait a very small amount of time. You're going to hit him with the first right body blow. Then you're going to wait another very small amount of time and then hit him with the second right body blow. Um, learning the distinction of these of the timing there is, is going to be a lot of trial and error. You're just going to have to kind of feel for, okay, this is enough time. I need to hit him here. Um, and uh, to be able to make sure that I keep the, the stun meter high enough. Because I can show you all day what, how the how these work and whatnot, but if you were to go into, you know, time attack mode and try to fight Dragon Chan, I guarantee there are going to be some times where you feel like you hit all the all the uh, punches correctly, but it just wasn't fast enough. You didn't do them tightly enough, and Dragon Chan just ain't going to get dizzy. He's going to look at you and then keep attacking. So, 
two left body blows at the start. The first right body blow, it's not linked. The second right body blow comes after a very small small amount of time. We're talking some frames here. Um, we're waiting for him to walk to the left ever so slightly. We're going to do a left body blow to counter him. We're going to link a right body blow onto that. And then we're going to duck down and cancel the duck with a second right body blow. This is just enough stun to get him dizzy, by the way. Like, if you try to go with a faster punch here, say, like, swapping out one of the right body blows with a left one, he's not going to get dizzy. You have to punch him an extra time because that's how specific it gets. But in any case, if you manage to get all that, Dragon Chan does this really great animation where he goes, Ugh! And he, you know, he kind of, like, floats off to the side. Um, and uh, all you need to do is right jab, high super. Just link all that together. And then you'll see him do this. Hits the mat. So no RNG associated with the first phase of Dragon Chan. The, all the RNG comes in second phase two. Now, um, when you're when you're trying for decent time in this, uh, you're gonna you're basically gonna be looking for the the two options that are gonna happen here. Dragon Chan is either going to try to heal himself, or he's gonna kick you. You want him to try and heal himself. And the reason for that is we try and time an uppercut to hit him just as he becomes vulnerable. And if he does a certain speed of of healing, because he has a couple different speeds for it, as long as he doesn't do a super slow heal, um, you usually can knock him out really fast. We're talking like he should be down before eight seconds are up. If he tries to kick you, you're stuck. You just have to dodge the kicks. And after you dodge the third kick, you do low rapids. You know, double tap A without holding up or whatnot. And you'll do the low, fast punches. You hit him in the stomach. He should be down either right before 12 seconds or just after it. See how big of a time difference that is. You know, sub 8 versus 12 seconds. Huge. But you can't determine that. Only Dragon Chan can tell you what he's going to be doing. So, um, no matter what you do, what you're going to end up doing here, and I'm, I'm trying to remember because I had I swapped the strategy around for blindfolded because it made more sense at the time. I believe what the buffer is here, um, in case you're trying to hit him for the energy, um, is you're going to go into a duck. It's like a... It's going to be a canceled duck. So you're going to duck down. You're going to cancel that into a left jab and then throw a high super. And what that's going to do is... If he does, if Dragon Chan is doing energy, your left jab is going to whiff. It's not going to do anything, um, because he'll he'll be in an animation where he can't be hit. the The super should hopefully finish him off. If it does not, there is a backup for it. Hopefully, I can show it to you here. Um, but if he decides to do kicks, basically he'll just block the left jab and he'll start doing kicks. So there's no real loss of loss of time there for the most part. So here we're gonna, we're gonna duck into left jab. Okay, so I did the wrong thing there. I did a high super. I should have done a low super, but basically you saw what ended up happening. I did the duck into the left jab and Dragon Chan tried to heal himself. And the animation for that is, you know, he, he goes a little transparent. He kind of breaks apart into two. And as he forms back together, you hear him go, oh, and then he starts healing. Um, he did the speed that... Uh, that unfortunately I wasn't able to knock him out with. I ended up getting him really low. So the backup for that is if you don't get if you don't get the knockdown here, what you can end up doing is you can uh, you do a, a hold dodge or a full dodge, meaning you hold the left or right uh, arrow so that you do a big dodge, and then as you're coming back to center, you do a low super. And basically what all that's doing is it's wasting the time that Dragon Chan's standing there like in full defense and it's preparing you to punch him as he's trying to step up to you to try and attack you. So I'm kind of glad he did that because I got to show that off. Uh, this He doesn't get up from this and it's nice that he it's at least a sub 10. So let's ingrain that first phase real quick. Again, manipulate the guard high. One, two three, four, punch, punch, punch. That's a good time. 
Sub six is good. All right, so we're gonna try it again. We'll see if he ends up kicking me this time. And he will. Okay, so I'm dodging out of the way, and just as I'm dodging the third time, I start my low rapids, and he's down. It's a sub 12. You know, it sucks, but what can you do? He isn't getting up from this either. Um, you can um, you can start the low rapids just as you're dodging the third kick. So you want to be careful because um, the the active frames on Dragon Chan attacking you with his kicks. Um, it sticks around for a very small period of time, so you can't just like quick dodge, you know, kind of like how you'd see um, Little Mac do in um, in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, where you know you just do like real fast dodge, you know, out of you know Sandman's you know uh, uh, uppercuts or whatnot. You know, you you still have to kind of make certain that you're out of the way for a certain number of frames so that you don't end up trying to like come back and then you still get kicked. I've done that before. So uh, so right after the third kick happens, you just throw low rapids and that's it. I'm going to try one more time just to see if he does energy and if I could show the, the faster knockdown. If he doesn't do it, that's okay. Um, you can reference other videos. I'm fairly certain um, either Zallard's uh, PB or, um, or Mystery Man's world record video. At least one of them has... Uh, if not both of them have an energy dragon chan where he gets knocked down very quickly. So I got to show off the, the backup again. That's okay. No big deal. So that's dragon chan. Um, you know, if, uh, if you get really, really lost in the fight and you, you don't feel like resetting or whatnot, uh, just know that he does pretty much the same thing as most of the other boxers do. If he's attacking on the left at one point, he's going to go to the right and do the same thing. Uh, you know, once you get Dragon Chan's movements down, he's very, very easy to counter. All right. Masked Muscle. Okay. So, Masked Muscle. He's a simpler fight, but there is RNG to him. So... Uh, mask muscle you don't want you want to manipulate his guard low so don't hold up or anything here because you're going to be punching him in the face okay so you're hoping for a face punch to start so uh what you're going to end up throwing you know whether or not you actually get it you're going to throw two left jabs a right jab and a left jab left left right left now what you're needing to be careful of here is you want to make certain that these first two punches connect. If these first two punches connect, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm remembering this correctly because it's been a little while, but as long as these first two punches connect, um, the next two are going to connect after that as well. So he'll either take all the punches or he'll take one of them and block the second or he'll block both of them. And that can get rough. I think there's actually a different strat that I'm teaching that I'm teaching right now that completely negates the double block, but I'm just going to teach it like this for now. We'll figure it out later. So again, what I'm hoping for here is that he takes the second left jab that I'm going to be throwing because that's the fastest way to knock him uh, to knock him down. Let's see what variation he's got. Okay, so he blocked the second one. Um, so again, you're looking for those first two left jabs. You're either going to get them both. Or you're going to get one of them, or you're going to get none of them. And uh, depending on what Mask Muscle does um, will depend on how you need to follow up. So if he blocks one of them, that means he's going to go into three different types of punches here. And depending on how many punches he of mine that he blocked, I have to decide how many counters do I need to do to get Muscle dizzy. Because... It's all going to be dependent on how many times I was able to hit him initially. So if I hit him once and then he blocked, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to counter him just as I did right here with a right body blow. And I'm going to execute three left body blows after this. The first two finish off the stun that, he, uh, that I gave him from this counter. And then the third one is actually going to hit him um, and just kind of blow through one of his attacks. If I had gotten blocked twice, I wouldn't be doing 
the three left the three left body blows here. I would do two, and then the third one I would time to make certain that it countered him again. And that's to ensure that his stun meter is high enough so that I can get him dizzy. Um, because I hit him once, again, here's the counter. I'm going to buffer three left body blows. One, two, three. You're going to see here he's trying to attack me, and I'm just going to go ahead and ignore him and hit him again. And now um, he's going to try for an uppercut. And the way that you counter that is with a right body blow. I'll show you right here. See how, he's, uh, see how he got countered? Now all I need, if you look at the super meter down below, I just need one more punch. I need one face punch, and then I can low super him, and then he should be dizzy. Mmm, okay. Why didn't we get dizzy? Did I, maybe I substituted a different punch there. Maybe it was supposed to be a left body blow. I might need to go back through that variation real quick. Like I said, it's been a little while. Oh, I could have messed that up. Let's see how many punches he gives me this time. Oh, he did all of them. Okay. So, you'll notice that because Muscle took all of those punches, all four of them, I'm going to be doing a faster strategy. My super meter is already pretty full. So, what ends up happening here is if you manage to get the left, left, right, left at the start... You're going to counter him just like you would do if he, if he, um, whether he blocked all of your punches or one or none. So you're going to do the right body blow to counter him. And then you're going to face punch him twice with your left glove. So two left jabs, one, two, and a low super. This will stun him. Um, I, I'm really terrible. This is actually my worst dizzy buffer. I actually hate it. <laughs> um, I tried to find something different uh, before because it was it's one that I tend to lose a lot of frames on for whatever dumb reason. Uh, the way that Zaller does it, uh, the way that I've learned it before, is it's a it's like almost like a tap duck. So you just kind of tap the duck button and then you let it rock, let a low super rock right uh, right as you're coming back up. Now uh, I did it correctly here. There unfortunately have been times where I've screwed it up and on a really solid pace after Bob and Dragon Chan. So there are some times where I will simply wait to hear the groan from Muscle where he goes, ooh. That's usually after he does that, you want to throw the punch. I end up missing out on a couple frames, but it's it kind of sucks sometimes. Sometimes you you just get, some part of this game gets in your head and you just want to be like, okay, whatever, I'll take the, the frame loss just to, to keep moving on it. Practice it later, you know. All right. So uh, this is the great this is the great RNG. You managed to hit him in the face all those times. This is the fast knockdown. Um, so when you get to this point, phase two is trivial. Um, he, it's, it's still too early in his patterns to where um, he can't spit at you. And that's really the only uh, awful thing about this is if he wastes enough of your time, if he double blocks you in the beginning and you end up knocking him down at like eight and a half seconds or nine seconds, enough time will have elapsed to where there's a chance that instead of just doing what he's going to do right now, he's just going to spit in your face. And if he does, it's run over. There's, there's no point. Um, but thankfully, since we're real early on the clock, all you're going to do is you're going to buffer a low body blow that he's going to block every time and then buffer a low super after that. That's it. He, he's not, he's going to take it and he's going to get knocked down. So again, left body blow, low super, 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. That's how you knock down a mask muscle. So uh, again, recap. Mask muscle, we want to see how many punches is he going to take? How many left jabs this time? Okay, so I have I have an issue here. I did not manage to counter him. This can happen. So, uh, he only took one of the left jabs. He blocked one of them. I was going to be going into my, uh, my, uh, my next phase. But I actually hit him too fast here. I'm not sure I can stun him. Let's see if this is possible. I'm going to try to make up for it by countering him again. So I opted to throw a bunch of punches here just to make sure that he got stunned. Because I ended up skipping 
the uh, the first uh, the first uh, counter. I waited for him and did the second one. And then with the second one, you can add up to three left body blows on him. So I just did all of them. And then I countered him with the right glove and punched him like, what, two or three times in the face before I finally supered? This is a very late time. This is It's very possible that he could spit in my face with this time. But I wanted to ensure that he got dizzy. So I did my best. Yep. If you're fast, you can do that. <laughs> If you see him go to spit, you can punch him really fast with a rapid. I didn't really mean to show that off. I kind of just did it on reaction. Um, but. All right, let's see. So this is what happens when you double block. Um, if he double blocks you... Again, you haven't managed to hit him. You just managed to hit him when you countered him the first time. Basically, you need to counter him three times to make certain that you're going to get him dizzy. So the right body blow will counter. You'll get two left body blows. Then you're going to, the next left body blow needs to counter. You'll do another three left body blows. And then the right body blow needs to counter. And I think you can just low super from there, but I'm not sure. Let's double check it. One, two, three, one, punch. Okay, yeah, it's enough. But again, look, 935. Absolutely within spitting range. Could he just do, like, could he just, like, block the punch and take it? Sure thing. He absolutely can. He's just not sure at that point. Trina, thanks for the host. I appreciate it. That's Masked Muscle. Um... He a little tricky, but once you get those first two punches down, um, he's uh, actually pretty easy. <coughs> and phase two is pretty free. Sandman. So Sandman's fun. Sandman's a completely mechanical fight. There's no RNG associated with this. Just do it right every time. This is a decent phase one. I say decent because it's a little slow for my taste, but... That was a that was a uh, a good executed first phase. So, when you fight Sandman, you have to start with his guard low. So manipulate his guard low by not pressing any buttons. Now, when the when the fight starts, you want to punch him four times in the face with left jabs, left jab, left jab, left jab, left jab, and then link a left body blow as well. So five punches, four left jabs, and a left body blow. The next left body blow needs to you need to wait a moment you can't link it together i'll show you what happens if you do try and do that do you have a good stream trina two three four five six, six. notice i can still get him dizzy if i want but now i'm at a weird time and basically, you want to set Sandman up for a very specific time because it makes his second phase absolutely trivial. Very nice, Trina. That's cool. So, again, four left jabs, left body blow, all linked together to three, four, five. Again, you're going to wait ever so slightly with this. And then you're going to do a left body blow into left jab. Excuse me, I probably need to blow my nose. Um, if you did all that correctly, you did it fast enough, Sandman gets dizzy. He starts, as you see, doing his little triangle <laughs> movement around the ring. Now, um, if you were watching the previous time when I was showing just like, here, this is what happens when you link them together, you saw that if I did three left jabs and an uppercut, I got the perfect time. Like the time, like the shortest amount of time that you can waste for a... Uh, for the dizzy buffer, you don't want to do that. That's actually not what you want to do here. Like I said, we're setting up for a very specific time here for Sandman. And the way that we do that is we got to waste a number of frames. To do that, your buffer is going to be left jab, right jab, left jab, low super. And that's going to waste some frames. And it's going to set up for a wonderful phase two. You'll probably remember this. From a Piston Hurricane, sort of. Just hold up an A. That's it. Just hold up an A. That's phase two. You don't need to bother with anything else. Sandman will go down. He'll always take that uppercut. 
because you're timing it to where he's going to start a move right as you're doing your uppercut. Easy as that. So, you now know how to do the first two phases of Sandman. Sandman is one of those boxers. He will get up uh, twice. So, he's going to get up with a bunch of health, and he's going to do his... Uh, he's going to go into his special mode, like, I'm the champ or whatnot. Uh, and this is where he's going to start throwing Dreamlands. Dreamland Express. So... To do phase three quickly, um, dodging the tri the Dreamland Express is trivial in this game. Very simple, not nearly as hard as in uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. But um, to do this phase correctly, you need to time an uppercut on on a Sandman, and it's very specific. So he's going to come back to the ring. The ref's going to yell "fight." You're going to watch Sandman bounce. He's literally going to like kind of bounce like a tiny little hop, and the time that you need to throw the uppercut is when he's coming down from that hop or basically at the apex of his tiny little jump, you need to be throwing your uppercut because that's going to mean that it's going to connect as he's trying to attack you. So uh, you're just going to have to kind of look for it. It's really quick. Again, you're looking for him to hit like the apex of his jump and you just want to throw the punch. And if you're too slow, notice I just traded with him. That's really bad. Because I should have super meter right now. And because I traded with him, I don't. That's going to elongate the fight by at least three to four, three plus seconds. So. Four left jabs into a low body blow. Wait a little bit. Left body blow. Left jab. Left, right, left into a low super. You're looking for around 511, 509, 513, even like 515. It's okay. Just throw a high super and it's all gravy. So I threw a little too late. Let's try it as he's reaching the apex of his jump because that might actually be a little more specific. I might have done, said a little too, too early. Ooh, but that's the thing. What happens when you throw too early? He dodges. <laughs> So you got to practice it. You do. Because you really want that punch. You really do. Um, you the, There's an easier way to do this. And I'll show you the easier way after I uh, manage to get the, uh, the other one. Because I want to at least show you once how to, uh, how to get that hit. really got some cakes <laughs> One, two, three, all right so about the apex of the jump let's do it mm. there's your backup we're just going to go ahead and show you the backup so if you miss your uppercut if he dodges out of the way buffer a left jab because that's going to counter him and then just do a low super and keep going and when I say keep going, I mean this is where the fight would continue off if you had gotten the uppercut successfully. So, we're going to do that. He's going to do that. He's going to do the, that fancy footwork, and he's going to... That's a great face. <laughs> I don't think I have that face saved. Um, his dreamlands always come in threes when he's doing full power. As soon as you dodge the third one, you're going to punch him in the face with your right jab. And uh, you're going to uppercut him. You need to do that because he's not going to take an unstunned uppercut. The little like ball bull in, the, in Mike Tyson's punch out. Uh, one of the variations at least. You need to stun him. I screwed up. I actually got hit. I think it's because I paused. So again, I'm fairly rusty. Having a little bit of a trouble right now. But that's that's Okay. It's kind of nice in some ways to illustrate that this fight, while I say is very mechanical, it uh, it can be tricky at first. Here we go. It's five, seven, nine. All right, we're gonna try it again. Again, I missed, so I'm gonna do the backup. Okay, so I managed to get the right jab. And I'm doing the right jab here because that's a, a I want the right jab because it is a specific amount of damage. Um, if you do a left jab, I believe he does not go down after this next. 
attack. So I'm going to hit him with the super. And what you do after this is do a, do a dodge um, and cancel it with a high super because it's going to catch him at just the right time. See that? Managed to hit him. Um, now, 1554, that's about... You're talking two and a quarter seconds off from where you really want to be. We we joke that the, the best time to get for Sandman is Leet, 1337. Um, you can get faster than that, obviously. But uh, it's a nice average time. And we're kind of superstitious <laughs> when it comes to this. You want a bunch of RNG going into World Circuit, that's all I'm saying. You want Clown to play nicely. You want Macho Man to play nicely. God, you want Narcissus to play nicely. Insta drop Sam. <laughs> All right, managed to get the attack that time. So again, I managed to get it that time and check it out. 1337 on the dot. Good time. And that's Sandman. That's Sandman. I'm going to mute my mic real fast because I want to blow my nose. So give me just a moment. Okay, that's a little better. 1337, yeah. No, Dango. Stupid Dango. Okay, World Circuit. World Circuit's when things get spicy. Real spicy. So Major Circuit has a bunch of RNG moments where you're hoping that A, you walk away with a good Bob time, you're hoping you walk away with an energy dragon chain, you're hoping that Mask Muscle plays nice, plays nicely, and that you executed the Sandman fight correctly. You walk into World Circuit, and any one of these fights could theoretically just destroy everything that you're doing. I mean, yes, Special Circuit has just as much capability of doing that, but by the time you get here, usually you're just like, screw it, I want to finish the run, see where this goes. Maybe you have a really terrible Nick Bruiser fight or something like that where you can gain a bunch of time. All right, let's see if I can recall how to do this correctly. Hey, what do you know? Muscle memory is a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's talk about what we just did. Aaron Ryan um, needs to start with his guard high, so manipulate his guard high. You're going to do a very specific series of punches. <laughs> I say that a lot. But you're going to hit him with two left, body, two left body blows, a right jab, and a left jab. Um, hit him with those four punches. You can buffer them all together. And then you need to wait for Aaron Ryan to jump to the side. So he's, after those four punches, he's going to leap to the other side of the ring. And it's kind of hard to tell you exactly when you need to be punching him. But the way that I kind of do it by feel is that he can be hit before he comes to a dead stop on the other side. So you watch him, watch him go ahead and jump. Notice, I just hit him with the series of punches that I had before, but I didn't get dizzy. Um, it needs to be fairly tight when you hit Aaron Ryan there. He's going to leap to the side, and then he's going to go into his attack. You don't want to see the animation of his, of his punch come out. Otherwise, you're pretty much not going to manage it. Now, you can do something like that, which is a little easier to do. Not It won't get you the best times possible but if you're not too concerned with shedding some frames here's what you can do do the first four punches then do a quick dodge and cancel it no nope, we're at 520 that's not too bad i would probably get this normally i've just so used to timing the punch that i'm not really phased by it anymore i didn't go and chain thanks for that <laughs> So again, you can do a left dodge, cancel it into a left jab, and just do that. So this is a this is a point where uh, this is a point in the game where we're actually going to waste an extra frame or so um, when it comes to this buffer. 
This buffer is really specific, and what it does is it sets up our phase two to allow us to simply super uh, to do a low super into Aaron Ryan. Um, basically, we want him to be at this point so that he's trying to start an attack with us, and we just super through it. Otherwise, um, when we were doing a different buffer for this, uh, it got a little hairier because you had to time the punch very carefully. Um, this makes it much easier to do. Let's go ahead and review phase one real quick. Um, it does not have any RNG in it. Again, you can just sort of, as long as you get these first few punches off, you're pretty good. So you do left two left body blows into right jab, left jab. Those are all linked together. Um, you can learn how to win exactly to punch him as he's jumping to the side, or as I just showed, you can do a dodge, cancel that dodge into two left jabs and a left body blow. Those are linked together and he'll get dizzy. And to do the buffer here, you're going to duck. You're going to cancel the duck with a left body blow and then a left jab and then do a low super. And that's how you um, do the very specific setup. You notice it'll go 522. As long as you waste 0 0.06, you're golden. That says it's exactly what you want to waste. All right. And now you just hold A. So holding A here is it'll always work. He'll always take that take that super. Okay, this is the hard part of the Aaron Ryan fight. You know, once you get the first phase down, you're good. But this is where this is where the really tricky part comes in. So Aaron Ryan does the thing where if you hit him with a super attack, he backs up, and his trainer tells you tells him, "Hey, grab this guy." You know, do the illegal hold move, and. Aaron Ryan kind of he'll his animation is gonna be he's gonna have he's gonna have this weird little stance where he's kind of like got his head cocked back and he's looking at you and he looks like he's about to rush you to grab on you. So um the tell that he's about to do that is he nods his head once. He's gonna nod his head at me. I'll just show you right now. He's gonna look at me, he's gonna look, nod his head, and then he's gonna grab me. So there are, I believe, three different speeds for that hug, which makes it very difficult to come up with a buffer that counters all three of those. Um, thankfully, we do have one. Unfortunately, the buffer is a really tricky one to get down. <laughs> it's not nearly as easy as a lot of the buffers in this game. So it's called the triple duck buffer. And it's, and basically you need to be executing it. Uh, you need to be linking this together after the super punch here. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about how I would explain how it works. Um, it's essentially like two actual ducks into a, into a, you're ducking, you're ducking again, and then you're canceling the second duck into a third duck, and then you're doing a low super right afterward. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way I can explain it. It's duck, 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 hit. It's almost like you're building momentum. You want that momentum to... St you're, 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 you're trying to make it go even faster. You're trying to go duck, 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 hit. It's not duck, 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 hit. It's duck, 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 hit. Gamma, Gamma Sama, thank you so much for the host. So you're going to watch my momentum build. I'm hoping I'm going to do this right. Nope, of course not. <laughs> Off of the... Off of the buffer, yeah. The goose, the the goose, thankfully, is the uh, is the low super you get to add there that'll knock his ass out. <laughs> Sorry again, I don't mean to curse while I'm doing tutorials. <laughs> okay, so second phase, we're gonna hit him. We're gonna try the triple duck. Okay, so we did it. We did it correctly that time. And I believe uh, Aaron Ryan went for the mid grab. So you kind of get a feeling for what types of grabs, uh, the, the the quickness of the grab uh, as you continue to play. But the triple duck buffer, when executed correctly, will cover all three timings. And however, it's just a very tricky buffer to do. Again, it's like going duck, 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 hit. So first duck is a normal like a tap duck length 
the second one needs to be the second one needs to follow right after it and then it needs to be canceled into another duck which then needs to be canceled with a low super that's how tricky it gets but it's very very worth learning because Aaron Ryan becomes very trivial after that he'll just shake his butt at you and then he'll he'll go down team gold squirrel hey I'm glad thank you for the host and I'm glad you're enjoying the uh the uh tutorial I really wanted to throw something together for people to finally start learning something about this game we just we just don't have enough resources on this stuff right now all right again so we're holding a for this and we're doing duck 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 now notice like I got th that was, that was that would that ended up being um like the head bob ended up coming very late at that time it's the window is tight for this like there aren't many extra frames that go on during like the latest grab versus the earliest grab where you're gonna beat out the, the timing but i do promise if you can learn the triple duck buffer you will be able to hit every one of them <laughs> what is that lori <laughs> <You're> gonna... <laughs> please please tweet that <laughs> please tweet that I absolutely need to I absolutely need to add that to the discord and to retweet that <laughs> oh goodness <clears throat> so that's the Aaron Ryan fight <clears throat> the only RNG in it is whether or not he's going to grab you at a certain time. And as long as you can do the triple duck buffer, you're good. Hey, K. Kigero. Hey, K. is your breather in the world circuit. Hey, K. is not tricky. So. Six. Okay. I miscounted. So for Hey, K., you need to start by manipulating Hey, K.'s guard high. His guard needs to be high. You're going to punch Heike in the in the gut six times with a left body blow. Five, six. Finish it off with a right jab. And this is going to make Heike dizzy. Now, the the buffer is going to be... Um, the buffer is going to be like what you did for Bald Bull, only it's not going to include two left body blows at the end. It's just going to be a low super. So it's going to be right jab into duck into low super. So do a right jab and then buffer a duck into it and then buffer a low super to cancel the duck. So, <laughs> all right. <sighs> phase two and phase three are the ones that you're going to be spending a lot of time on. So we're going to do something that if you're familiar with fighting game terms or whatnot, uh, might be a little easier. It's called negative edge or essentially it's negative edge. And uh, what that means is the um the input of a button ends up going off as you're releasing the button instead of pressing it and the reason that we use that term here is because what we're going to be trying to do is starting this next phase of the fight with low rapids and as you may be familiar at this point low rapids takes two presses of the a button in order for the game to go oh you're trying to do rapids instead of a, a like a big super um <clears throat> This can be very tricky because Heike hits very fast um, coming out of phase two and phase three. Very, very fast. So you need to be on the ball about um, about connecting with this. To make it easier on you, what you can end up doing is make certain that you've let go of any buttons or whatnot, you know, as you're waiting for Heike to get up. Hold the A button. So tap it and hold it. And then as the ref is yelling fight, what you're trying to do is you want to let go of the A button and then press it again. So instead of having to tap it twice, the release of it and then the tapping of it again is what tells the game, oh, hey, you're doing rapids. And by doing so, as long as you're quick enough, you can hit Heike first. And if it's during phase two, you can set up for um, a super that will knock Heike down. Or if it's for phase three, Heike just takes all the punches and gets knocked out. Now I'm telling you this because there's a there's a prob there's a moderate chance that I won't actually be able to show you phase two and phase three just because I haven't really gotten my timing back for this. When I move to a different setup here, 
with my retro tank and whatnot, I actually started working on blindfolded stuff more often. And for blindfolded, I didn't touch the rapid section here. It was too difficult. There was too much room for error. So you see right there, that's your, that's going to that's gonna be your most common mistake. I didn't let go of the button and press it fast enough. And because I didn't let go of the button, the game said, oh, you're throwing a low super. And you can't do that. Heike's going to hit you. And you're going to lose a lot of time. So this is where a lot of practice is going to help. I'm still laughing about the <laughs> a series of very specific punches. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, so I'm holding A. Mm, see, you even saw the animation of me going into the rapids, but I wasn't fast enough. I didn't start them immediately. And if you don't start them immediately, Heike hits you. So that's what you have to work on. That's what I have to work on personally. I want to run this game again, but you need to get Heike to a point where you can do that consistently. And one of the hard parts about this is it's not like this is a super complex series of uh, execution. Uh, it's, a, it's a super complex execution series or whatnot. Uh, I can't just boot up an emulator and do this because the timing will be completely off. So, a lot of ways you just kind of have to grind this out and make certain you can, uh, make sure you can do it. I'm trying to at least get one instance of it. You can obviously go back and reference Mystery Man and Zallard and even my own, uh, PB. And you can see exactly how the fight goes. But, uh, but in practice, yeah, this is going to take a little while. It's going to take you, um, it's going to take you working through. That one was close, but I still got punched. Part of the part of the issue for me, of course, is that in some ways I'm still learning my own timing on this setup too. So it's um it's hard. I had my I had a previous uh I had a previous setup where I had the timing down perfectly. And I never ever had to worry about whether or not I was gonna counter Heike. But alas. Mm. Yeah, I might try a few more times. This doesn't feel like it's going to be completely worth my time to show it if you can just go back and reference another video, but um, I'd like to at least show Phase 2. Phase 2, thankfully, is um, very simple once you actually do get the Rapids. It simply involves trying to hit Heike with a face jab, with a left jab, and then going into a low super afterward. There we go. Okay, so I'm holding... Okay, so here's what happens. Low rapids will occur. You're going to hit Heike before Heike hits you. He's going to go, uh, 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 uh. and then Heike's going to do one of two things. He's either going to block the low, the, he's going to block one of the low rapids, or he's going to dodge one of the low rapids. Either way, is going to it's going to break your rapids, so you'll be ready to throw additional punches after that. Um... If he blocks it, he ends up wasting a number of frames. I think it's like five or six. Uh, if he dodges, hey, that's cool. You got a tiny fraction of a time of a second back. But uh, you know, any any amount of time is cool. Basically, what you want to do is whether or not Heike blocks or dodges, it doesn't matter. You want to buffer a left jab, and then after the left jab, buffer a low super, and that finishes him off for the phase two. And phase three is literally just getting the rapids again. If you can do it, then um, then you're great. Um, however, if uh, if this happens and you screw it up, yeah, you have to suffer through Mirage Dance for a little bit, and you end up wasting a lot of time. So you're looking for about an eleven point, about eleven point seven, something like that. Sub twelve. No, once you uh, once you get it down, actually wait, no, that'd be sub eleven. You're looking for a way better time than seventeen. <laughs> so 
So my best time on there, 10, 6, 9. It's not amazing, but... Uh, Task for Heike is sub 10, but it involves some frame perfect stuff, and you don't want to have to rely on that. <laughs> so, practice, practice, practice. Get those Heike Rapids down. You'll feel amazing. Mad Clown. Okay. So, hate Mad Clown with a passion. A lot of us do. So, those two punches are the most important punches of the fight. If you do not get them, you are screwed. <laughs> you might as well restart. I'm not even joking. So, in the Mad Clown fight, you can try to start the match with a few extra punches to the face. You're hoping to hit Clown in the face twice. You're really hoping that he doesn't try and do a clown punch, is what we call it. Which is where he tries to counterattack you for attacking him. That, right there. Because it wastes a bunch of time, and it can screw up your timing. Uh, he decides when he wants to do those. They're random. They're stupid. And if they hit you, they hurt. And you're pretty much done, because your super meter's gone at that point. Um... However, it is really nice to get those first two punches because it sets up for a really crazy cool um, uh, phase one. It sets, up a, it sets up a really great phase one that could potentially be a super fast clown time. We're talking like sub 10. And you want, you want that sub 10 clown time for, uh, you know, any run really. It can, it can help erase a really bad fight that you had. It's not enough, by the way, to only get the one punch. You need multiple. Also, again, I want to stress this. You absolutely need to hit the first two counters. The first two punches that Clown does, you need to counter them. Because if you do not, then uh, you're in trouble. Thankfully, the second punch can be buffered. The second up, the second counter that I'm doing right now, it can be buffered. The first one, however, cannot. Mad Clown's a really tough fight to to try and uh, perform a buffer at the very beginning because he has a lot of randomness to him. So that's why you just need to be ready because if you want to try for the faster strategy, you're trying to give him face punches. You need to be sure you're, he's not going to hit you with a counter punch, and that you can still hit that first counter. Because if you can't, the fight's over. The timing is a little easier when he does block the two hits. Um, because you know he's going to throw a punch right after that. It gets weirder if he does like one block and then he does the the, the clown punch. Because you got to get out of the way. You have, you have to let him go back to neutral. And then he gets, goes to try and punch you. And if you don't get the counter, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's going to be curtains. Um... So this, so I'm just going to show you without punching him in the face. I'm just going to let him walk, and then uh, we're going to go through it. So I'm going to wait for it. I even missed it. So. so it's important that you get that, and as long as you can, you should be able to dizzy him here. And you really want that. you got to make sure that he uh, gets dizzy. Practicing on him as well here, like, like, saying like oh hey he taunted right here he's gonna punch immediately after the taunt or oh if he doesn't then he seems like he takes a long time for it and you just want to be ready for it so let's get into the punches you counter his first punch with a left jab you're gonna do two more left jabs after that buffer them all together in fact buffer everything that i'm telling you right now until he gets dizzy in fact buffer all of the dizzy in part two <laughs> so this can all be just chained together. You're going to hit him with a left jab. That counters him. Do two more. Then you're going to do a quick dodge to the left and cancel it with a right jab. That's going to counter him again. And then you're going to do two more left jabs. <laughs> he's now dizzy. As simple as it looks, he's actually dizzy right now. Now, um, there are a bunch of different setups for how to do this particular buffer for this. It depends on whether or not you have super or not. Here's the easiest one that you can do. 
Simple, simple, simple. Just remember it if you ever need it. Right body blow, right body blow, left jab. It only wastes one additional frame. You manage to do it without having any super and it's it's almost foolproof because you don't even need to bother with any movement associated with it. Let's call it sub 10 quick. <laughs> gotcha. Um, now the only downside to this is that yes, you've managed to knock the boxer down without doing a super. Usually means they're getting up with a lot of health. The only reason that this doesn't terribly matter with Clown is because what we're going to try and do here is we're going to try and move him to a certain attack, that an attack that we can uh, that we can counter very easily, and then make him dizzy again. Because Clown's very susceptible to high rapids. If he gets hit with high rapids, he often, unless he Unless the game tells them like, oh, geez, you know, you, you only can take this many. You need to break out of it now. Uh, if you counter him and then do high rapids, he's usually dizzy right after that. So that's what we want to do. We're actually going to see me try and punch his face. And I'm hoping that he either blocks or takes the punches so that I can get to the that to what I call the slide punch faster. So we're going to be able to fit in, I believe, two jabs. Excuse me. We're going to try and fit in two jabs here. And then he's going to do a slide punch. You're going to see him back up, and he's going to try and do that like sideways, you know, I don't know like karate chop at you. And uh, as he's coming in, you can left jab him to uh, to counter him and then just go into high rapids. He's going to get re-stunned, as you'll see. Let's see. Let's see if it works out. And there's that. Okay. So... That's exactly what happened. We punched him once in the face. He blocked it. And then I punched him in the face again. And as I was doing so, basically he was trying to do another attack at the very start of that. And he blocked it and skipped that attack. And then he moved straight to the slide punch. It's as he's coming in from the slide punch, you can do the left jab and that counters him. He do high rapids. He gets dizzy. Well, now you have super meter. You need to be able to to hit him to knock him out here. Problem, we don't really have a great buffer for this. It's really tricky. I might have found one early on when I was doing blindfolded, but it wasn't a great solution. And basically, this is kind of just comes down to feel. You need to be able to hit him with the super here. Um, you want to hit him as he's coming back to the center of the ring. You do get two chances at it if you miss the first time. Um, and it just takes some trial and error because it's kind of like listening for the audio sound of something and just going like, wow, 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 wow. And then doing like the high super after you hear the last part of the wow. That's not super helpful, but really, I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, you just kind of need to practice it. Third phase for Mad Clown is the simplest. Um, he's going to try and go into what we, what the game calls Showtime. In Showtime, Mad Clown throws tons and tons of punches at you and does lots of slide punches. Thankfully, you don't have to put up with that BS. All you need to do is do a right jab. Just buffer a right jab right now as he's coming in. It's going to counter him, and you do a high super. That's phase three. All done. That's three. So... Mad Clown has a lot of different variations, so he can feel like a pretty difficult fight to get down. Really, the biggest difference you're going to find here is whether or not he allows you to punch him in the face twice. And it's pretty rare, honestly. It's kind of rare for him to let you do that. If he does let you do it, it just kind of opens up for possibilities of getting a faster phase, too. Notice... Notice Clown, when I tried to punch him the second time, he did the he did the clown punch. And then he still he still tried to do the attack, the one that I made him skip last time, because his moveset wasn't there yet. He still thought, oh, I still need to try and punch you before I go into the slide punch. You gotta be careful about that. You gotta remember, is he did he just clown punch? If so, does that cancel the move that he did? Usually no. Usually he's going to try and pick right back up from where he was. Um, so 
I technically had to do three jabs there. He just had to dodge the clown punch after the second one made him do that. And then uh, counter the slide punch, do what I was doing before. And then I'm trying to think of the best way to describe what it when you need to throw the punch here. Basically, clown does, a, does the thing that a lot of the boxers do where they kind of shake. They kind of like violently shake and then they do another part of the animation. Basically, clown will go off to the side here. He's going to shake and then he's going to start moving back to center. Um, I want to say that what I usually look for is that shake, um, to end. See, I missed it the first time, but I watched for it the second time. And basically, right as the shake was finishing, I threw the punch and it was done. And of course, phase three, again, right jab for the counter. I super, that's clown. You can get a sub 10 clown. It is possible. You do have to land those first two opening hits. It's really annoying. I might as well just say that it's kind of the more advanced strategy for this and move on. Because uh, I don't really want to be stuck doing a special circuit all night. So we'll, we'll save that for one for another time. Macho man, the ender of runs. No one likes macho. If you do, you're lying to yourself. This dude sucks. Um, he kills more runs than anything. Uh, doesn't matter if you think you're on good pace, Macho will end your run. Thankfully, we have a new secret weapon against Macho. It's not a, not something that will really, not something that will ensure that we always get past him, but it usually ensures we can get past phase one. So... Here's what it is. Original strategy, speaking about past strategy now, it was that we had to manipulate his guard high in order to start hitting him in the tummy. Um, we wanted that because we needed to do a, low, a right body blow to start the fight, and then we needed to counter him at least once, and they had to move through the motions, and even after, if we managed to get all the way there, there was actually a potential to 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 beat so fast that Macho has a higher chance of throwing like an exercise or just a higher chance of doing something that we don't want him to do other than we want him to just stand still during phase two. Uh, but we have a different method now. So here's how it starts. It's a little weird and it's not 100%, but it's pretty nice. So, here's how you start the fight. You start it with a duck, if you can believe it. You're going to duck low, and as you're ducking, you're going to cancel that duck into left jab, right jab. Uh, <laughs> if you're heading out, Team Gold Scroll, take care. Um, ducking and then doing a left jab, right jab, it will catch him when he's just standing still, and, thank God, it will catch him if he tries to dance to the side. He does have a chance of double dancing. I don't believe it works well if he does do that. However, I think you may still have an opportunity to save the, uh, the first the phase one. You just end up taking a, a strong time loss for it. But, in any case, we start it off. It's a duck, left jab, right jab. Those are buffered. After this, we need to time a counter with a right jab. I did it poorly right there. We ended up trading blows. You don't want that. I'm finding it really hard to get my counters after pausing, so forgive me. But in any case, duck, left jab, right jab. He may show us that, uh, that it still works with it. So we want to make sure we get that hit. And it comes pretty quickly. So it's like duck, left, right, right in some ways you got to make sure you get that uh that great spittle shot of uh of macho man make sure it's a counter because if it's a counter you're going to hit him twice in the gut with your left glove so two left body blows after this counter all right and now after this you need to time another left body blow and that's going to counter him again so make certain you get that left body blow counter add one more and then low super so you're going to do the low super. He should be dizzy right here. 
And he is. Yay! Okay. So you got Macho Dizzy. What do we do now? What are we aiming for here? Well, we used to have a certain a certain buffer that would waste no time at all. Well, we don't want that. We actually want to waste some time here. Let's get back to where we were. Okay, we're back to where we were. All right, so here's what we want to do. Let's say, for simplicity's sake, that you do manage to do this buffer, and or rather you do all of this and you manage to make Macho dizzy. But let's say that you're at seven seconds or more on the clock. I'm sorry, but I'm still getting a little stuffed up right now. Let's say you're at seven seconds or more on the clock when he gets dizzy. You don't want to waste any more time. What you're looking for is hitting that threshold of seven seconds. You want to like just barely eke over that. Um, the reason for that is because it becomes more, it becomes more likely that Macho is not going to throw an exercise and he will simply stand still so that you can try and complete phase two. Um, there is a buffer that I use right now that I find to be very useful because you can change it up based on what your time is. And you usually have enough time to recognize it as you're inputting the command. And what I mean by that here, I'll show you. Um, I'm going to get something like a six point, probably like six high 6.8x or a 6.9x. And I'm like, oh, I need to waste more frames. I got to get over that seven second threshold. See, there we go. 6.9x. What we're going to do is we start with a left jab and then we link it into a low super. Now, as we're doing the low super, we're looking at the clock. You're looking at the clock and going like, okay, I need to get some extra frames here. So I could do left jab, low super, low super. It wastes no extra frames. If I did that right now though, I believe I would hit 699. And I don't want that. I got to push over that seven second mark. So you can swap out the second low super and do a high super instead. And I'm going to show you just what that looks like. So I'm doing the, I did the left jab. I did the low super. I'm doing the high. I didn't do it correctly. <laughs> um, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I was just trying to hold the button. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we got jokes. Let's watch Macho Man get hit again. Excuse me for that. <laughs> okay, so. Uh-oh. Well, okay. If I had anticipated that, that would have been a great time to do left jab, low super, low super, because it would have been after the seven second mark. I think I've made my point at the very least. <laughs> um, you do two low supers in that sequence if you want to waste no time. You do a low super into a high super if you want to waste some frames. All right, so there we want to waste some frames here. So we'll do the high super. There we go. We're over the seven second mark. That's what I wanted to show you. Yeah, I'll upload it to YouTube, something like that. And definitely put it on the punch out discord as well. <laughs> okay, Macho Man, he's getting up. This is phase two. We're at the mercy of Macho at this point. This is where runs go to die. Um, if Macho throws an exercise, I'm sorry. If you're trying to get any kind of any kind of really good time, throw your runaway. <laughs> Just get rid of it. Um, I mean, it really, if it's going for going like really top tier times, yeah, this you definitely should not take any time where he throws a an exercise. If you're trying to go for a PB and you think you might be able to eke it out, just just take it. Um, there are two methods of getting the phase two on Macho, so. Both of them involve not getting an exercise. So let's just go ahead and make that assumption. Let's hope that he doesn't do that. Let's hope he stands still. If we want to go for the faster knockdown, it's a little scary. What we're going to do for that is you're going to hold up to try to manipulate his guard a little bit. And what you're going to do is you're hoping that he's going to pull his guard up or keep it up and he's going to stand still. And what you're going to do is as soon as you have the opportunity to do so, as you start this phase, you throw a low super and you'll know that you're doing all right when he takes the low super can he dodge it yeah unfortunately he can 
But if you do manage to hit him, what's going to happen after that is he's going to start his attack. You need to counter him with a left body blow and then do another low super right after that. That usually will give you a sub 10 macho, a fantastic time that you'll, you would love to carry into uh, uh, the special circuit with. I'm going to try and do it right here. I don't think he's going to play fair or play nicely, but let's see. No, didn't really happen. That's a backup that you can do if you decide to try for a really risky strat and he just dodges the super. You know, he didn't throw an exercise, but you still didn't get the hit. What you can end up doing is um, you... Uh, like at the end of uh, the end of the sequence that I was telling you about, you can still do the left body blow to to uh, to counter him, do a low super, buffer a right body blow, which will basically uh, punch through his next attack, and then do low rapids immediately after that. All of those together will basically hit him as he's trying to hit you, and will get him to the point where he'll get knocked down, just like so. Phase three is up to you. <laughs> if you want to try to low super him right here, be my guest. But you're probably walking out with a really, really bad macho time. You're going to bleed at the very least five up to ten, maybe more seconds. So it's rough. Macho sucks. He really does. But... Thankfully, with this um, new phase one um, that was found, I helped find this one. This, this I feel, is probably my biggest contribution to Super Punch Out, and I'm very happy that I can that I was able to contribute it. So, this is the backup Macho. Not, I shouldn't say backup. This is the more, uh, this is the safer Macho. Trying to go for the low super immediately in phase two is risky as heck. I would only do it if I was if I needed the uh, the time save. So here's what you can do that's actually simpler and can still yield a decent time on Macho. When you start phase two, do a tap dodge, which basically just means tapping left or right on the controller. You want Mac to do the full animation of the dodge. So Watch him go from right to left or left to right. And as you're finishing that uh, that animation, hold A to do a low super. If you did the timing right, you're going to hit him with that low super. And then you can time a right body blow to counter his next attack and then do another low super, just as I'm doing right here. If you've done that, congratulations. I don't think he's getting back up. And if he does, well, that'll be par for the course for this tutorial, but nope, he didn't get up this time. It's just fast enough to be able to get the KO. So, I would not feel bad taking a time like this. 10.54 is a great time. As it shows with my best time, yeah, you can definitely walk away with a sub-10. It's risky. Um, sometimes to the point where you're just like... You know, if you got great RNG on some of the other boxers, man, do the safety. <laughs> do the safer version of Macho. But, you know, it's... He's not even the last gatekeeper. Because <laughs> we're moving on to Special Circuit. This is already taking a long while, but I'm glad I'm finally getting it down on video. Alright. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a good pause for him. Hey, Ryan. Let's go! Special Circuit! We're here! The blonde butthole himself, Narciss Prince. Um, we joke that Narciss has a flowchart. Joke with quote marks. He actually does. He's ridiculously stupid. Um, he is the most random fight in the game. He's the most frustrating fight in the game to learn, pretty much. Um, and getting a fast time on him is all dependent on what he does. And being able to react very quickly to what he does. So it's um, it's very important that you learn all the different things that Narciss can do. And figure all those things out. Because um, knowing your options here is what's going to save your run if you manage to get to Special Circuit. Okay. Alright. 
Let's try and break this down in a simple way. Let's keep this basic because I could do an entire video with the help of, you know, uh, Zallard and, and Mystery Man and just on this guy alone. He's just that ridiculous. All right. There's one very important thing that you need to remember in this fight, and it's whether or not you got him to attack you early on. Let's watch him real quick. You notice that Narciss will dance around and that he'll go into these two punches to start. Punches around, well, like the three second mark. So these punches are scripted. He'll always do them. However, Narciss has a couple of attacks that he can try and do when you throw random punches. So he'll try and counterattack you. The good thing about this is that you can use those counter punches as opportunities to make him mad. The um, the uh, the way that you manage to do most of your damage to Narciss Prince, which is hit him in the face, get him to back up, yell at you, and then go all out, and then you wail on him until he's down. Um, when you start the fight here, um, I recommend don't manipulate his guard. I mean, you can try. You can hold if you're doing so, hold up. But really, what you're going to do is you're going to throw two left body blows, and you're hoping to get him to counter you. Notice that? Okay, so he blocked both of them. And he looks really smug. He's such a jerk. All right, so he blocks both of them. If he blocks both of them, we just have to play it normally. Notice he wasted my time. <laughs> Narciss can randomly dance and dance around the ring and waste your time. It's the worst thing in the world. I hate him. <laughs> um, but normally, if I had done those two body blows and he had blocked those... Normally, the attack would have come very quickly after that, but he decided to dance. You just have to, you have to be ready. <laughs> and sometimes he will double dance. He'll do, he'll go in one direction and then he'll swing back around and then he'll still keep his attacks moving. So be prepared. He likes to pull shenanigans. So what you'll end up doing is if you cannot manage to get him to counterattack you in the start to make him go a little faster counter him with a left body blow and then with left face jab so this is going to start his angry sequence um ignore his animations you need to be focusing on doing this buffer right here this buffer is very simple it's right jab right body blow right jab right jab right jab again one right jab one right body blow and then three right jabs that third one is going to tell you how the fight continues. One, two, one, one, three. So he's trying to punch me, the jerk. All right, this is the more common um, variation that you're gonna get with Narciss. He attempts to punch very quickly and he's gonna do so with his left glove. I'm gonna counter him and you'll hear him go, eh, which is a great sound. I love it. I love hearing him get hit. Um, specifically, when you counter him like this, um, the, uh, the, the branch for this particular, uh, of this particular branch of the Narciss tree, so to speak, is, is simpler than the other ones. Basically, you counter him with this punch right here. You're going to give him two left jabs. And then you're going to, mind you, these are all buffered, including this next punch right here, which is a second right jab that's going to counter him again. We're going to do two more. Oh, wait, I screwed that up. Um, it's right. It's going to be the right jab that first counters him. Two left jabs, a right jab, one left jab, and then, um, and then you need to do rapids at that point. The rapids will determine whether or not he's going to get dizzy. <laughs> I know it's it's frustrating. Let's try and get back there to where. Let's try and get back to that variation. It's really hard to talk about this fight without actually showing exactly what's going on in it. So, I hit him with a right jab there. It's not that big of a deal. I just wasted a little bit of time. Okay. All right. So, you will notice that Narciss... I, I have my super meter. It's full already, but we don't usually do a pause trick right here because it's not really worth it. So... What you'll end up doing is, here's your second counter. You're going to do one left jab, and then you're going to do rapids. 
You could try face rapids, the high ones, but he breaks out of them pretty regularly. Narciss just sometimes breaks out of these. You want him to get hit with the rapids about four times. If it's any fewer, he's not going to get dizzy. It means you're just going to have to keep wailing on him until you potentially get him dizzy. Um, I would recommend doing the low supers instead. Uh, he can still break out of them, but it seems a little more consistent uh, in terms of getting him dizzy. Note, he only took one punch. He then shook it off and then attempted to keep counterattacking. This is common for Narciss. You'll notice, see, when I, paused the, when I paused the game after that, it was 13 seconds in. Crappy time for Narciss. He's a really bad fight. All right. So we'll do this again. See, does it give me the same pattern? He does not. Okay. So that third right jab, if it does not counter Narciss, you're walking into several different variations at this point. It's not as simple as just hitting him and then doing the getting the second counter and then hoping he gets dizzy off the rapids. So if you hit him in the face right here, but you don't counter him, oh man, where do I even start? Basically, you have to try and hit him several more times, and then you're trying to you're trying to uh, note where his next move is going to be. Usually at this point, he's going to be trying to throw uppercuts at me, which is you counter those with uh, with body blows. However, you don't always know whether he's going to throw a left or a right uppercut. I have seen him throw both. It's random. <laughs> you just have to be prepared for it. Now, he blocked one of my punches here. I don't actually know exactly where we're going. I might have time to try one more attack. Actually, this is the second punch, isn't it? I should probably just wait here and see um, where he's going to uppercut. Oh, so I got hit, unfortunately. So that's his dizzy animation. I didn't do the uh, the buffer correctly. Um, but that's his dizzy animation, and it's fast. Narciss has a very quick one. Um, in fact, most of the uh, dizzy animations for Special Circuit Boxers are fairly quick or very specific. So you kind of have to know how to knock them down. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's going to get dizzy here. So if he doesn't, then we're just going to keep fighting. But if he does get dizzy, basically what's going to happen here is he's going to take all of these attacks. And then by the first rapid punch that I'm going to do that misses is going to be when he's dizzy because I won't be able to hit him. All right, give me one second. I'll blow my nose. Sorry, very frustrating to keep talking and feel like you're stuffed up. In any case, um, for the dizzy buffer, most of the time when you get Narciss dizzy um, during this fight, you're going to be uh, doing so with rapid punches because um, it's just, for as much as I say that he can break out of them, it's a very consistent punch um, in terms of setting up the buffer to knock him down and also for just adding stun to his meter. And basically what you need to do is, as your rapid punch is missing, the first one there, you're gonna buffer duck, and then you're canceling that duck with a low super. Just like that. Takes a little bit of, a little bit of practice. If you're, if you're not quick enough, you may still be able to get the, the hit if you if you uh if if you like you failed the duck or whatnot, just try low supering. You might still get lucky, you might still be able to knock him down. So this is what you're hoping for in phase one. I mean you're hoping for a better time than that, but it's it is what it is. Um now we need to remember did we provoke Narciss into counterattacking in the beginning? If we did we're doing something different in phase two. If we did not, well, we're gonna do this that I'm gonna show you. 
Um, okay, I'm gonna try and remember if it's tap, if it's tap dodge, or if it's full dodge. It might be a tap dodge. I'm gonna try tap dodge here. Well, that didn't work out. All right. So this is a bad Narciss time. What I was attempting to do was Narciss usually will stand there and wait for a small amount of time, and then he'll try and attack you with a face punch. Unfortunately, Narciss decided to do something different this time. He allowed it to dance or whatever else, which will screw your timings up. Um, a tap dodge, if I'm remembering it correctly, um, should be should waste enough time to where you let the animation occur and then you hit a high super and you'll basically hit him in the face as he's trying to hit you. It will take away a ton of health and it will also put him in the angry phase very quickly. Um, if you uh, if you end up, um, I need to go review the buffer for getting the rapid down on. Narcissus, because I'm not very good at that one. But this is essentially what ends up happening. You try and super him in the face for phase two. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with that, I'd recommend just face, just uh, timing a right jab and countering him, which should be a face hit anyway, and it'll make him angry. And then just dodging him and attacking and then trying to use supers on him, because supers do so much damage when Narcissus is angry. So much damage. I will need to do... This, by the way, will be a third uh, uh, phase three fight. Unfortunately, this is just too slow to be able to knock him completely out. Narciss can be knocked out. Um, it's just difficult to do so. Uh, I will say this. You can sneak in low supers if you try and manipulate Narciss's guard. It does not always work, though. So if you just need a tiny bit of damage and he's not in angry mode, try doing something like that because it may help you um for phase three you basically just have to block and punch um his uh his uh his when he blinks like that he's gonna do three face punches on you don't ever let him hit you don't ever let him hit you just please hold your guard up block those three attacks do a body blow and then do a super a high super to knock him out yeah, I mean, or if he somehow has enough health, put him in angry mode and like take him out. Take out, take care, Shandy. Um, the reason for that is that triple hit and also the counter attacks that he does, they do an incredible amount of damage. And the counter punches specifically, if he hits you with them, it's absurd how much damage he does to you and then how much damage he heals. Stupidly powerful. Like, I, I kind of want to show it, just to, just to show how dumb it is. I'd have to get through this fight first. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. Counter-punching Narciss. For those first two left body blows that you do, if you punch him and then he kind of does like a little couple little steps, and then he's going to try and hit you in the face. That's the really powerful... It's really powerful, honestly, it is. I'll show you what the damage looks like. But, um... You want to block high, you got to block it, and then you got to punch him in the in, uh, in the stomach with a body blow, and then you got to punch him in the face. So we're skipping part of his attack, and now we are moving on to um, trying to get him dizzy. Okay, so this is a bad time, but I want to show you because we skipped his initial attacks in the beginning of phase one. He still thinks that he needs to go back to those attacks. So what we can do now is we can, uh, we can manipulate him a little bit to where we can actually hit him, um, hit him really fast here. I don't know what his health is gonna be at. All right, so let's low super here and then counter and then high super. Did you see that? Those were the first two attacks that he normally does. He just never did them because we counterattacked him and then put him in angry mode. Note, he still got up. We still have to go through uh still have to go through this crap here, but but you do get some free attacks in phase two because 
you know that those uh, punches are coming. Um, there are different variations for what you can do there, too. Um, depending on how much health Narciss has when he gets up for phase two, if you did the, um, if you got a counter punch in phase one, you might be able to completely skip that first punch. You like hold left body blow and you skip through it and then you counter him once and do a high super and that can knock him out. You can do like a low super through the first attack and then counter him and then do a high super. Like I keep saying, Narciss is a huge tree. He has a lot of different branches. I couldn't possibly cover all of them at this point in time. If I have to if I have to tell you one specific thing about the Narciss fight here or one specific way to do it, I would say to do it consistently and carefully. Start the game, start the fight off by not counterattacking him. Do your best to keep that buffer going. Learn how to get him dizzy. Learn how to do the buffer. And then just learn how to do phase two quickly. I'm going to try the tap dodge here just to make sure it works. Hmm, it's not a tap dodge, okay. Might be a full dodge. Also, he's really creepy when he dodges your attack like that. Like, he's still staring at you even as he's, like, moving back. Alright. The third light jab. We managed to get the counter. Okay, that's what you're hoping for. You're hoping to get those three low rapids there so that Narciss gets uh gets stunned. So we're gonna do a full dodge here. Okay, it's a full dodge. All right, so if you're doing a full dodge, holding the right directional arrow there, letting the animation occur as you're coming back to the high super, as long as he didn't do something stupid, like dance around or whatnot to waste more time, if he just stood there, He's going to take that super. You'll notice it did a lot of damage. And then he's going to come back. Now, here's the part where you may need to go reference a different uh, uh, runner's video. Because I'm actually fairly weak at phase two Narciss at this point in time. Um, such as, I don't remember the buffer here. There is a specific buffer that um, is done in order to try and hit Narciss with, a f with high rapids as soon as possible. Mystery Man might do it. In his vid in his uh world record video, I can't recall. I think Mystery Man might do it. I'm not sure. <clears throat> or you could get really lucky and you could just super him in the face. This should be good enough for a knockout. And it is. <sighs> He's a jerk. Narciss will kill a run very easily. Um, you really want to keep him low in terms of his time. Oh, okay. I guess I hadn't really gotten a lot of very good time on him recently. Practice, practice, practice. We'll probably have to do another very long and um, much more uh, relevant video for Narciss himself. But let's move on to Hoy. Hoy's our boy. Hoy's a jerkwad. They let people bring canes into the boxing ring. All right. So. Hoy's a jerk. Um, if you don't get the dizzy, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> I mean, you, you could say that about most of the boxers, really, in this game. But Hoy, very specifically, will not give you many opportunities to even hit him, much less dizzy him. So, um, what you're going to look for here is you can sneak in two face punches when you first start this fight with Hoy. Keep his guard low. If he does, you can try for a quick, a quicker um, stun if you want. But uh, you're basically trying to do incredibly stupid strats. And remember, if Hoy blocks you once, even just once, he does this stick shove thing kiss any stun meter this guy has on him goodbye it's gone because stun stun um stun accumulation is done by frame so every frame that's going on where he's not getting hit or whatnot 
It's de- it is just decreasing its deteriorating. And he does just one of these, you're doomed. Like you're not dizzying this guy unless you're doing some really dumb strats. I actually use a couple of uh, things. Oh, hey, mystery man, what's up? Four left jabs and high rapids. Thank you. That was the Narciss one. Four left jabs and high rapids. Thank you, man. I, I'm i sorry I didn't see you <laughs> earlier. Uh, too much into talking about Hoy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Uh, so Hoy, you don't ever want him to hit him to uh, to knock you away with his, uh, with his cane. So in some ways, you can try and actually force this out early in the match and uh it's not as bad at the very start because you're obviously you're not dealing with um with deteriorating stun at that point but um nah see even that's not a stun right there it's too much time <sighs> god this is actually a really tough one to explain because um uh, you kind of have to play it by ear, and you have to play with uh, with some backups if uh, you don't get certain things. For example, um, so when you start this fight, as I've been saying, there are two initial face jabs that you can sneak into Hoy, and then he starts with his attacks. He's going to start with that cane that he kind of shakes uh, up high, and you want to punch through that. So you want to go like... He's going to do like, a, you saw him kind of like dip once and then dip twice. After the second dip, he'll start his attack. So you want to punch him in the face just as he's doing that second dip. You're going to basically cancel that attack. And he's going to go for uh, this one right here where he's going to try and hit you in the side. Um, keeping your guard neutral, by the way. In fact, a lot of Hoy's attacks can be blocked uh, if, uh, if, you, you know, if you happen to... That happens to be something that you need to do on this. You usually don't do that in the speed run. Um, but if you can sneak the two face punches in and then get the third one for the stick attack, sometimes you uh, you can actually go with a faster... I screwed it up right there. But uh, what you end up doing is instead of countering with a right body blow for the fourth hit, you can usually just hold the button or, uh, or link the button together with the others and buffer it. And uh, and try for a faster knockdown. It's stupid though, because you can get something like this. Like it's gross. You absolutely want this. This is a beautiful time for Hoy, knocking him down sub 550. However, uh, this however he just gave me literally everything I wanted. He didn't make his guard sticky. He didn't go high. He didn't like to shove me away. If he had done so at any point in time during this, it's a lot like the seven punches on Bob. Like, it's a dumb strat. You do it when you're behind. You do it when you have nothing left to lose. If you get it, holy moly, it's amazing. You know, but it's like if you were go- if you were coming into Hoy with like any kind of lead, you would not be doing something like this. You'd be trying to take it safer. You'd be trying to do uh, some other stuff that I'll that will show you. But um, but that's this is the stupid strat for Hoy. You would get a time like this, and basically what you'd end up doing after this is not too dissimilar to what you'd uh, do in the other variations for Phase 2 and Phase 3. Basically, you're really just trying to get Hoy down as fast as possible. Hoy has a kind of sticky guard where he likes to show that he's not blocking in a certain direction, but as you're attacking, he'll change it. Suddenly, he's blocking you. Um, So some of this is kind of guesswork. You can try for low supers here. You want to make sure you're holding up before you're doing so to see if you can try and keep his guard high. Or you can try for the high supers to hit him in the face. You will do more damage with the high supers. The low supers are a little quicker. So kind of dependent on what you want to try for. And sometimes it's really just like luck based. So uh, if we're already talking about phase two, you get the opportunity to throw two supers here, and that's about it. If you wait a tiny amount of time for the, you can actually get that third super, the third super here. You can sneak that in and hit him as he's trying to attack you, but you can't chain them together. So just don't try and do that. You can't buffer all of this stuff together. The first two uppercuts that I did here, those basically were buffered. Um, I just tried to do them this right off the bat. Um, 
but don't try and do the third attack immediately. You need to wait ever so slightly to uh, to be able to um, to counter Hoy here. This is still a really good time, especially if he gets hit by this next super. He's going to get up with very low health. So if I can hit him with one more uppercut. Look at that. Boys are boy. Sub 10. Gorgeous time. You'll never get that. <laughs> never get that in a run. Never happening. I mean, not never, but still, it's it's a dumb time. Okay, so let's go back to phase one. So let's let's assume, hey, we're not doing really ugly, stupid, uh, awful strats here. So he does this. We're gonna still punch. So if he does cane push you here, if he does push you out of the way, um, one of the things that you can do is uh, um, you can buffer a left jab. So we're assuming like, hey, I didn't get the two face punches. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I got pushed out of the way and now he's going to hit me with his first attack. Just buffer left jab. You will break his attack there. You'll hit through him. And then now we're at the point where we're like, okay, he cane pushed me. Uh, we have to start back at zero. So I got one punch in. Now I need to counter him. I can't just push through like I did with the stupid strats. Like the stupid strats were literally what? The three left jabs. I did a right body blow that didn't counter him. And then I did three extra punches that he didn't block. Um, super scary stuff. Um, for the for the safer strat here, you want to counter him with the right body blow. So you need to wait for him to attack like that. Not like that. Don't let him hit you. <laughs> but, uh, but counter him instead. Uh, obviously, you cannot buffer that together. You got to actually um, time it. So let's see, let's see if he does that again. No. The timing is starting to get a little off because I'm getting tired. <laughs> but... This is this is just as important of a fight. This is going to be Rick Bruiser is really your your breather here. You need everything to go right for uh for this. So if you want to go safe, what you're going to end up doing is you need to counter Hoy in certain spots. The first one's going to be with the right body blow that you do, and then you need to find a way to continue your attack after that. So you notice that I waited a little bit there to make certain that the right body blow hit, it stunned, and then I still got the extra face punch on him. Um, so this is where it gets really tricky. You basically need to check Hoy's guard. Now, um, you need to check his guard and you need to make certain where his guard is uh, so that you can hit him without him stick pushing you. Because if he does stick push you, it's pretty impossible at this point. Unless you do the super, super safe backup strats to try and get him dizzy. So we're going to watch for his guard here. Um, just playing Hoy a lot of the time, you can sort of gauge where his guard might be. I got him in the face there. I don't recommend doing the rapids, by the way. That was uh, that was a mistake, mainly just because I don't have a uh, a solid method of um, of doing the uh, the dizzy strat there. Here we counter him here. Look for his guard. This is a super super safe um, uh, dizzy and stun knockdown. You will notice, look at the time. I'm already at 1098. Like, this is phase one. This is not going to yield a great hoy. Um, however, if everything has been screwing up at the very beginning and you really, really need to get him dizzy, then this is probably the, the best way to still get him dizzy. And what that means is um, after you try and figure out his guard there to try and sneak a punch in, you need to counter him. He's going to do an attack on the right and then an attack on the left. So I'm like, okay, I managed to hit him in the face here. He's going to attack low and and I need to counter him with my right glove. Like so. And then immediately after, so I counter him with my right glove. I did a body blow. I then need to counter him again with a body blow. And then I forget, is it a right jab low super here? 
Yeah, it is. Okay. So you can still get him dizzy. It's just like you're if you want the insane times on Hoy, you have to be you just have to throw caution to the wind. And sometimes like the best way you're gonna know whether or not to do that is whether or not you uh see look at that. I actually got most of the punches there, but because how because of how stun works, uh I didn't actually get him dizzy. It's um it's tricky sometimes. Always weird. If you're just starting out to um to try sp speed running this game, I don't recommend doing anything but some really safe strats for for Hoy. You could certainly go crazy. In case you can dizzy him if he's super after the right hook counter. Oh, I see. Glad I had Mystery Man here. Oh, I should have taken that time. That was better than my other one. <laughs> but you can dizzy him if he's super after the right hook counter. Uh, mm. If you end up in a situation like this where you just got cane, you just got stick pushed a few too many times, and now you're sitting like this, you're going, oh no, I had a, such a great run, and now this is looking really bad. Well, pretty much the only option you have left is to try and sneak in a couple extra hits on Hoy to get your super meter up, and then start getting some supers in. It is going to require you to learn more of the fight in order to, uh, to establish, hey, these are what the punches that he's going to throw. Um, see, like we knew he was gonna throw high there. Another one. You just kind of have to learn the the other portions of the fight to go like, oh, he's gonna attack with his high glove here. I need to counter him and then do this, and then he's gonna do the spin punch. Yeah. All right. So theoretically, your phase one can look a little bit like that. It's not, it's not super, not super clean, but it's still as long as you can get him dizzy. Just get him dizzy, in any way possible. Your biggest, your your biggest backup is going to be those last two low hits. The one that starts where you can uh, counter with a right body blow. The other one starts with your counter with a left body blow. You will get, I want to say, up to one hit from the right body blow counter and then you can get up to two in a super um with the left body blow counter and even if you missed everything else if you manage to get all of those together i believe you can still get a dizzy and that's hard i, th I mean i'm pretty sure that's the case i want to test that real quick it's been a while gotta dodge these I didn't get the, the hit. Well, actually, it wouldn't matter anyway because I wouldn't have super. So you still do need to get some hits in, but it would definitely be during the initial part too. So it's like even if he stick pushes you, do this, counter, hit, and then wait for it. Wait for it to come out like that, and then do this. This is super slow. But even if you can't dizzy him here, at least you have super meter. <laughs> at least you have that. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the one I'm going to need to review the most with uh, you and Zellard, Mystery Man, because I've forgotten quite a bit about Hoy. And two, and do that, and counter, and do that. No. He's not a fun fight. Practice him. Um, just uh, just work hard. We'll definitely put out a better video for him. Uh, probably a better video for just like a full circuit of these uh, boxers. Let's move on to Rick and Nick. I'm getting pretty tired, so I want to make sure I can cover everything. Rick is your breather for a special circuit. 
So you're going to start by manipulating his guard down, so don't hold up or anything like that. Once his boxing gloves fall, you're going to punch him in the face with a left jab. Now, um, the timing on this is... It's funny because it's so automatic for me at this point that it's hard sometimes to go back and be like, oh, I just pressed this. Uh, it's basically a tap dodge that you're going to do. Uh, you're going to do it to the left because I'm pretty sure um, that it starts to become specific at this point for uh, for being certain that you're going to dodge the attack. Um, you're going to you're gonna jab uh, Rick here in the face. And whenever you jab Rick in the face or get him with, a, with an uncontested hit... He likes to counter you. So that's the reason that we're dodging. We're going to dodge, and then uh, we're going to do a tap dodge, and we're essentially going to do a right jab right after that. And that sets us up, because that right jab is a counter. And that right jab is that you can just buffer everything after this. It's great. Um, so you do a right jab. And it'll counter him. You're going to right jab again. And then you're going to do a right body blow. And you're going to repeat that. And then you're going to do a left jab. And do that. Did I get that right? I probably missed the time on that. Wait, why did we... He went to the other side, didn't he? I think I hit the wrong button. Let me review that real quick. Yeah. Went the wrong side. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so let's review. First phase for uh, for Rick. Again. Oh, that's right. I forgot you can you can block the counter. So uh, Mr. Man brings a good point. If you have a hard time dodging this counter, you can block it and simply do that. It does waste time, but that's okay if you're if you're not going for the super times. If you're, if you're not, if you want to try and save every frame, uh, definitely dodge the attack. But if you're finding it difficult to get that timing down, it is a dodge. It's like a tap dodge. So tap, now. So just tap out of the way, and then as you're completing the uh, the motion, just come on back and hit him with the right jab. But if you're having trouble, just block it. Let's block it. You're gonna go ahead and do that. So it's two sequences of. Right jab counter, right jab, right body blow. And then as you're finishing the second sequence of it, you're going to do one more right body blow. And this sends him into the stun animation. Uh, or rather, sends him into the dizzy animation. And the uh, the best way to uh, do the buffer here is just two left body blows and a low super. It's getting some pretty poor times. I probably need to, to tighten up that dodge. I'm actually curious. Maybe I'm spending too much time in the dodge. Because that's the only part that I'm really feeling like I'm going slow. No, see, this, this is what happens if you go too fast. If you go too fast, if you try and uh, do like a super quick dodge and try and hit him again, you won't actually counter him and you're going to end up getting hit. <laughs> because you're only going to do like a, uh, a normal hit on him. Okay, so this is phase one. 707 is not a great time, but it's it's acceptable. So uh, you have what you probably should do um, here. I mean, you can do it one of two ways. You can manipulate his guard to either let you hit him in the face or you can hit him in the stomach. Um, it's... Uh, uh, you you're gonna it's gonna be faster if you manage to get the the left jab instead of the left body blow. But if for whatever reason it's a little easier to do one over the other, then by all means just do that because you're not wasting too much time there. If that's if you've gotten all the way to this point, you really don't want to screw up the last couple of fights uh, if you have a decent pace. So do what makes you a little more comfortable here because it's uh, it's gonna carry you to victory. So I'm gonna do the jab. I'm gonna jab him in the face. He's gonna do the counter attack again. Um, only this time, instead of going high, he's going to go low. So I'm going to do a right body blow. It's going to counter him. And then, very, very important, right jab after that, and then a low super. The right jab's really important. That right jab is 
it's really necessary. It's just enough damage. And it also gives him a certain refill. Okay, now he has one of two things here. There's a 5 eighths chance, a 62.5% chance that he'll take an uppercut here. And if you did everything correctly, that uppercut should knock him out. It saves a, it saves a bit of time. In fact, it saves a lot of time. It ends up being like three plus seconds. Um, you want to hope for it, but if it doesn't end up happening, it's it's not the end of the world. There is a backup. Uh, yeah, just like the right hook in phase one, you got to do more damage early on for those little refills. Um, uh, so for here, he's going to dance around a little bit, and then he's going to go into a, uh, a scripted attack where he's going to blink a little bit, and he's going to go into a three-parter, a three-hit a three hit combo, basically. And the way that you avoid it is you block low, you block high, and then you dodge out of the way. So it's bump, bump, dodge. And you're going to see it right here. And all you need to do is, when he has to dodge out of the way, hit him so that he's stunned, and then deliver the final low super. And that'll be it for Rick. He'll go down after that. It's, um... He's a fun fight, to be honest. I enjoy him. Um, especially since once you get to this point, you're usually worrying more about Nick. <laughs> Going like, oh my goodness. You know, this is bad. <laughs> no, I... I hope I get the counter. Because <laughs> everything with, with Rick is very mechanical. You can, uh, you can just sort of autopilot it after a while and it's not too bad. I'm going to see if the, he gives me the 5 eighths luck here. And he does. So that's what phase 3 looks like when he actually takes the uppercut. Again, 11.39. Great time. Uh... Great time to be able to slap onto the spreadsheet. And that's it. That's Rick in a nutshell. There's really not a whole lot more you have to worry about. Let's move on. Nick Bruiser. All right. Nick is one of the two fights in the game, he sh uh, along with a uh, bear hugger, where you don't need to, uh, or you don't need to worry much about uh, manipulating his guard. You see, you can actually hold up and Y at the start of the fight to start left jabbing him, and he's just not even going to block it. He's that cocky. So here's here's the toughest part about your run. Um, everything comes down to Nick and whether or not you can get the counters on him. He's very fast, and um, you need to be prepared for, uh, for where he's going to be going. Latency matters a great deal for this. I spoke about this at length when I, uh, at the start of the video, but you need to be very, very um, aware of what your latency is when it comes to this, such as if you're on a Switch or say if you're on a Wii U or, or something else where you're, sh where you're certain that you're dealing with a certain amount of input latency, there is you pretty much shouldn't even be bothering trying to uh, to see the counter coming. I, I want to say that it's around eight frames or so of, uh, of, of a window where you get to actually see where he's going to be attacking. And latency on some of those, some of that hardware can be bad enough to the point where it's not even worth it. You just have to guess. You just have to throw, do the 50-50 and go like, is he going high or low? I'm just going to pick one and I hope I hope I'm right. And then you're going to have to hope you're right twice because you have to do it again in phase two. So if you have a CRT and you have a console, yeah, like what Mystery Man said, great. That's that's a benefit. That's that's a boon. But uh, if you do not, you know, your your strategy kind of changes. And in some ways, it, it, it kind of makes the decision for you. You just go like, okay, I just have to guess. Is it going to be high or low? You know. And if you're doing it blindfolded like we did for at uh, GDQ Express, you know, that was that was nerve-wracking. You just had to pick pick one. I should have picked low. <laughs> I should have picked low. There was a chance I could have won that race. But that's uh that's Nick for you in a nutshell. He just loves to to mess with you. So you get two left jabs on him, and then you have to make your decision. And there's not really any way I can tell you how to work this out a sec except for just like you need to just do it so 
So let's back up and see and see what I just did there. Okay. So you do not have to do the strat I just did um, in order to have a decent time on Nick. Um, so what I ended up doing was I saw him going low, so I countered him low. Um, the right jab for if you see him punching high, right body blow for low, obviously. Um, when you counter him, you want to make sure whether or not is a frame perfect counter because that really matters here. Uh, if it is a frame perfect counter, you're going to hear him yelp. It's going to be a little bit faster and he's going to move. He's going to move a little bit faster when he does so. And that's hard to tell you without actually showing you. And it's going to be difficult for me to actually manage a frame perfect counter right now. But um, if you can do that, basically you can just jab him out into dizzy state if you wanted to. Uh, I mean, you're probably not going to be doing uh, a frame perfect counter specifically. You're not probably not going to be trying specifically for that. You might just get it on accident. Uh, but essentially, the easiest way to do this phase doesn't involve any kind of weird movement. Like, I just did a weird move where I did a duck in between the attack with Nick, and it basically allowed for extra damage on the punch. You can just do something like this. Now, I wasted some frames there, but you'll notice I literally just buffered every single punch. Aside from kick, aside from the counter there, every single punch was buffered. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Man. We all hit a frame perfect once in a while. <laughs> um, if you, if you manage to get the counter on Nick, here is literally the easiest thing that you could do. Left jab, right jab, left jab, right jab, left jab, right jab, left jab, left jab. Let him get dizzy. And then, um, if Nick goes to the left, um, and this is dependent on how you punch him, by the way, which side you're hitting him. Um, if he goes to the left, um, is technically a different buffer than when he goes to the right. If you want to save every frame, if you do not care, here is a buffer that works for both sides. It is every normal punch <laughs> and an uppercut. It's literally that easy. It is left jab, right jab, left body blow, right body blow, uppercut. That will knock him down. As long as you keep buffering all of those moves together, like just don't get scared. Like you you even still have just a tiny bit of time for when Nick is coming back or get or getting into his dizzy animation where you're still throwing like a left jab or whatnot. Just do the right jab after that, then the body blows, and then just throw the uppercut. And it will work. So, two, three, four, five, one, one, two, three, four, and down. That's it. That's phase one, Nick. So as long as you can hit the counter, congratulations, you did it. Um, you'll notice that I got about a 650 on this first phase, and I, got, I think I had a, like a 618 the first time when I was doing the other strat. Basically, instead of just jabbing him out when he was in uh, when he was encountered in the in the hit stun state, um, what I ended up doing was I did three jabs. I ducked down low. I did a right body blow at a certain time, which I think is, I, I think it's frame perfect. It's just easy to time, but it's uh, it essentially just did more damage and then another left jab, and that gets him dizzy. It gets him dizzy almost a half second faster. Um, great when you want to save a half second. Okay, let's talk about phase two Nick here. So phase two Nick, you have a couple options here. Um, you can, this is tricky. You want to try and sneak in that extra, that extra hit, that face jab, but you really want to make sure you try and counter him. And I did not. So it's, you usually will have time to sneak in one additional left face jab and then he will try to attack you again. And as long as you can get that second counter, you should have the KO in the bag. Um, it will, however, depend on whether or not you are uh, fast enough in some ways to... Uh, 
That's not a real buffer, by the way. I, I was fucking around there. <laughs> I just happened to get it correctly. Um, look, he jumped all the way back up. Guy, is he going to do phase two the same way? Oh, I forgot wrong side. Yeah, just counter him a little bit. No, I'm dead. <laughs> um, I'll go over the uh, the overhead attack in just a minute. So again, we go back into phase one. We're going to do two left jabs, and then we're going to need to choose. I need to figure it out. And then you can just jab him out if you want and just do that. That was lucky. <sighs> Wasn't a super either. I'm pretty sure I got a uh, frame perfect there because 571 is a dumb time. Note, n note that Nick can actually take supers in between his own attacks here. So don't be terribly afraid to throw these in case you need to just try and get him down. Just know that he can dodge and that there is a possibility that if you throw it at the wrong time, he can catch you. Kind of like just what he what he did just there. This is probably a good, uh, a good place to show um, the 25 second mark. Um, We'll do a, a quick uh, a quick not a KO in just a minute, but uh, Nick likes to do a special his special attack, which is the jumping attack at uh, at twenty five seconds. And there's a way that we can um, there's a way that we can get him to uh, uh, basically we can knock him out real fast, regardless of his health. So you have two methods here. So at 25 seconds, he's going to jump attack at me. And if I don't dodge to the side, he's going to knock me out in one hit. Now, you can actually set up a, a buffer where you can knock him out of the air and instant KO, instant knock down him. And to do that, it's dependent on whether or not you're punching him with a normal punch or with rapid punches. If you're doing rapids, you need to... Uh, you need to do the rapids so that the timer crosses over into the 25 second mark. He's going to back out of the rapids. And basically what you're doing is as he does so, you just you just buffer high super at that point. So it goes from into high rapids into high super. Yep, you, yeah, it's literally uppercutting his jumping attack. Uh, if it's a normal attack that you're doing, so like you're punching his face, it does out to 25 second mark hits, um, buffer left jab, right jab. And that will hit him as well. So, here let's let's try and do the rapids real quick because I'm pretty sure I have the time to uh, to make this happen. Just like that. So, uh, I was doing the rapids. It crossed over into 25 second mark. He backed up in order to do the jumping attack. My rapids were ending, as you know. The first time your rapid punch misses is when it uh, turns off. And you just buffer high super. You will hit him every time. It feels really good. <laughs> so there's your backup for if you desperately need another knockdown and you and you didn't manage to get the counters on Nick and whatnot and just. Okay, so um, I'm showing off the uh, the different strat for for the um, for when you get the counter. It's left jab, right jab, left jab. You're going to do a tap duck. And as you're coming back up, you're going to do a right body blow into left jab. And that's it. And then to not waste any frames here uh, when he gets knocked to the right. Thanks, lol dog. Have a good one. Thanks for uh, for hanging out. Um, to do the... Uh, to, to waste none of the frames so that this is going to be a 618 when it's done. It's two right body blows a low super and then a second low super all the all buffered together that'll keep all your frames intact okay so let's say you had a great phase one you managed to counter nick you even did the you even did the different uh buffer uh strat here you are you got like a 618 you feel really good about yourself what do you do so phase two again we're going to try and sneak that last face jab in and then we're going to need to try and counter him again. 
if we get the counter, then uh, what we're going to do is we're basically just going to face jab him again with our right glove because it, uh, side side dependency is important for Nick. Um, like if he's if he's shifting to the right, you cannot hit him with your left glove. So you have to hit him with the proper glove. Uh, so if you counter him, counter him with like a, either a left jab or a left body blow. Give him a right jab since he's flying off to that side and then high super him. He should be done after that. Um, let's see. I'm missing a critical variation here. I'm having a hard time remembering. I think it's part of the, the backup super here. Yep, and this is the this is the knock in. There it is, 926. So again, you sneak the face punch in, you get the counter correct, you give him a right jab, you give him the high super, and that's Nick. That's the kind of time you really want to see on your uh on your uh your your sheet. Unless you got unless you were a lucky son bitch and you managed to get the uh <laughs> the the frame perfect and you went for the really stupid strats and you just decided to test your way all the way through it. I've I used to love when um when Zallard would uh have moments where he wouldn't be on pace anymore and he'd just be like, Well, it's time to do tasks for literally everything. Note, those punches are all interchangeable, by the way. You notice that I screwed it up at the start? I was like, oh, I was throwing a left jab. Oh, well, I'll just do all the rest of the punches and do an uppercut. It's the same thing. I lost, I think, one frame. So. And that's that. I, I I know I hope so too. <laughs> I would love that. I mean, if anyone's gonna get him, it's gonna be. If anyone's gonna get that, it's gonna be Zallard. Be ridiculous.